Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be in the world. Welcome to TraderTV.Live. North American Stock Futures back to the upside. Once again, we've reversed to early declines back in positive territory. Uh, third week in a row, we got the uh, U.S. weekly jobless claims number out this morning that came in bigger than expected this week. 6.6 uh, .6 million versus uh, 5.2 million expected. And the market is rallying on that news. So not as bad possibly as uh, many uh, could have expected. The Fed, meanwhile, coming out at the same time saying they're going to add an additional $2.3 trillion in uh, spending to help support the economy exactly uh, during this uh, uh, coronavirus outbreak and tough time, uh, obviously. Uh, all three major U.S. indexes on track now to gain more than 10% on the week. We have travel and leisure stocks moving back to the upside. Airlines are higher. Cruise lines are higher. Uh, we're seeing some energy names moving higher. Crude oil up about 5% on, uh, on the morning as well. Uh, on the data front elsewhere, Canadian March unemployment data out this morning at 8.30 as well showed uh, almost 1.1 million jobs lost in this country last month. That was versus an expectation of 350,000. The unemployment rate in Canada, meanwhile, at 7.8%. We'll also get University uh, University rather uh, of Michigan sentiment numbers coming out at 10 o'clock this morning. A uh, lot going on. It's Friday, April 9th, 2020. TraderTV.Live. And there we go. Look at North American stock futures uh, as we head towards the open once again this morning. Uh, right across the board, positive territory now a full percent uh, to the upside for the S&P, the Dow, uh, the Nasdaq as well. Slightly lagging there. You can see TSX futures here in Toronto up 0.3 percent. Brazil's open, trading slightly lower. I was down about one and a half percent about five minutes ago. So they're on the way back to the upside. Bitcoin to the downside. We have crude oil now five and a half percent to the upside ahead of a key OPEC meeting uh, today coming up that could uh, result in further production cuts. I'm tired already, guys. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Friday morning. There's, uh, there's lots going on. Sean's already stacking money. Good morning, guys. Yeah, good morning. Uh, it's Thursday. Brandon. It is Thursday. Uh, it feels like a Friday, of wow, course. Brandon. What am I talking uh, wow, about? Brandon. There is that holiday a tomorrow. Short week, obviously. I'll <laughs> yeah, be fine. short week. Easter. Uh, Easter. It's a Friday. Good Friday coming up tomorrow. So the U.S. markets are closed, and as such, we won't be here. But uh, it. it it should be a good one. Jerome Powell timing things uh, to perfection. Uh, it is what it is. You know, we just had a massive uh, bounce off the bottom here in the future, 60 handles uh, and counting. Uh, you know, we can still go further. We have about 30 minutes until the open here, so plenty of time to get more of a run in. I'm going to quickly jump into the numbers so we can get this show on the road, guys. You know what? It's, it's only in markets like this where I can look at this board of all the top traders that day trade the world uh, by individual market and say it's a, actually almost disappointing to see only 29,000 out of London and 22,000 out of, of NASDAQ, so making 15,000 over in the CME and then 14,000 in Germany. And you do see Paris coming at eight and the Amex seven, to Canada six as well. Good numbers, uh, we've seen some bigger ones. I think today is probably gonna be uh, potentially one of the best days of the week, uh, given the way that we started things off here, Sean. Yeah, CCL already up 6%. I oh, wanna say shout out to uh, Crystal there from Vancouver Island, West Coast in the house. So yeah, uh, yes, thank you for joining us today. And yeah, hit that like button, hit the subscribe. If it's your first time on board uh, with us, we'll be trading live uh, right now and uh, throughout the day. We don't take too many pre-market positions, but we will uh, if something comes in here. And yeah, like you said, Neil, the market, wow, up almost one and a quarter percent right now. What a rally, if you can see this, uh, chart. Uh, this is when the number came out. I mean, again, it was jobless claims. That's not the case uh, that rallied this market. Obviously, it's the 2.3 trillion in uh, programs that have been initiated now by the Fed. So uh, we'll see, guys. It's going to be a fun day. It'll be uh, lots of stuff on board here. I've written down Apple, some Starbucks, some Disney. Let's go over those names, Brandon. Yeah, let's uh, jump right into things here this morning, guys. Lots to get to. Obviously, Disney, you mentioned there, Sean, uh, the first one we'll uh, start uh, with this morning up about 5.5% now. It was uh, about 4%, but continuing to move higher. 
They announced uh, the most recent Disney Plus subscriber numbers that came in much higher than expected. 50 million subs now for uh, Disney Plus. Uh, JP Morgan coming out uh, with a note specifically on that number, citing uh, much higher than expected. And uh, kudos to uh, Disney on that move. Uh, guys, I mean, five and a half percent. The market's up about the same. What do we think of Disney here? We like Disney. I mean, look, I, I, I've been talking about Disney Plus. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a great platform for them. 50 million subscribers uh, come through. I don't know what they were expecting uh, exactly because this was an easy one. It's kind of just like that run that Zoom had before all these uh, legal problems, apparently. Uh, and now, you know, Netflix, we've seen a similar run. So, yeah, Disney up 5%. And we, and we have just some easy levels here. I mean, it's only in a $2 range. It's basically 107 out of the top and 105.50 to the bottom. On the daily chart, it's been a crazy run uh, back upside here for them. They did tick down uh, to 78, 79, but look at this drop. We are basically at all time highs here in December, well we were, uh, and then just trickled all the way down, obviously coronavirus fears. Who's gonna be traveling? Who's gonna take their kids uh, to Disney cruises? They have their own cruises. They have their own vacation packages uh, and whatnot, and then obviously the theme parks, and they've stopped all their business uh, as far as making new movies and stuff like that. So all the way down, but yeah, then they get this bump up. So look, one of the best companies in America if you want to buy value, I think Disney's the right one to play. And not only that, though, Neil, a lot of people were hating on Disney. So when you get a little bit of an upward move like this, I'm wondering if it's people caught with their pants down. Yeah, the last little move to the upside here was yet a 108 that we're just trying to teeter onto right now. We did get up to 108.30. Uh, if you look at the pre-market and have come back in. So that's a big break if we can get that price today and strength of the market. It certainly can't hurt that cause, especially if we get, uh, you know, that 2800 level is a big one on the ES. If we get there, you'd like to think Disney can make a move. We're watching 107 as well. Uh, support at 105.90. I like that one when I was looking at the charts. So, you know, Disney's got some room to run there. Yeah, there's some down, there's some concern like you mentioned about the parks and the fact that hey, movies are a massive part of their business here, and uh, you know people aren't going to the theaters anytime soon, but there's lots of ways that they can use their ecosystem uh, to get the movies to people. Pay-per-view, all those kinds of ideas maybe could come into play for them, so we like Disney as well. Uh, let's go jump on some other names, but Disney's going to be in play for sure for us. All right, guys, we'll continue along with, uh, with the review here in a second. Uh, worth mentioning, guys, busy, busy show coming up. We have uh, T.G. Watkins joining us at 1140 this morning uh, from Simpler Trading once again to talk about uh, how his week has gone, some of the things that he He's looked at uh, from the technical side as far as equities are concerned, so stay tuned at 11.40. We also have the guys from uh, uh, CB Wine Program and uh, Charlie's Burgers Dinner Series coming by at 10.30. Really excited to have a conversation with them as we continue our discussion with uh, charitable uh, donations coming along with this. Uh, as far as the uh, coronavirus uh, is concerned here in Toronto. So uh, we'll touch on that coming up at 1030. TraderTV.live, uh, uh, very happy to be donating to their cause as well. At uh, 1030, we'll talk to the guys from CB Wine Program. Right now, uh, we're going to go over and check in with uh, Valeria and say good morning to her. Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the live trading show. If you're passionate about trading or you want to learn and improve your skills, and if you want to be updated with the latest news from the world of finance, you're at the right place in the right time. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for our channel so you get notifications when we are back on air. And of course, guys, let's keep the live chat active. Leave comments, ask questions. Tomorrow is a good Friday, so US market is not working, and it's a perfect time to ask traders questions before we go for the long weekend. I'll see you later. Back to Brandon. Yes, tomorrow is Friday. Today is Thursday. Uh, let's continue along. Starbucks, guys, uh, moving to uh, the upside as well. We had a little bit of news uh, regarding Starbucks. Uh, they said their fiscal second quarter profit will likely drop uh, anywhere from 45 to 55 percent. Uh, because of the COVID-19 outbreak, they also said they are suspending their share buyback program, but will continue to pay a dividend. So I just noticed that uh, Starbucks, yeah, was significantly lower here, uh, but with this number has basically closed this gap to the downside. We're still negative, but just barely. 
Yeah, there was actually a breakout significantly after the number here. You know, we got to that, this little top. This was a good level, this 70-10. Uh, maybe if we can sort of go back and uh, have a look at what that means, that 70-10 area, 70 even, whatever you want to call it. It was a breakout yesterday. Uh, it was a bit of a wall of resistance uh, on Tuesday. So uh, that was a good level that just broke. And watch out for yesterday's top uh, at 72 as well. So uh, a couple of levels here in Starbucks. Positive, a negative to positive will be almost right at the open here. I'm seeing a bit of a spread. So uh, 71.50 could come into play. That's basically where we closed that uh, yesterday's session. The, the story here is the market. Uh, so as you're seeing this recovery, I mean, Starbucks was holding a tight range to the downside before this. It's at least worth mentioning as I look at this compared to Disney. Disney didn't really get as much of a bump there uh, on that big move up in the futures uh, where Starbucks did. So uh, that's worth putting in the back pocket. Yeah, no, Starbucks, I mean, look, if you're going to fade something today, I think it would be Starbucks just because of the fact that it was down. It was one of the only stocks uh, that we were looking at that was significant. I mean, it's not even significantly down. It was down 2.7% at one point. But uh, I think, it, look, if this market does come back, I don't know, we are bumping up to that 2,800. Uh, you could see Starbucks fail. And if it did, I would look for it around this area here, 70, 50 or so. Uh, let me zoom in just a little bit more. This is kind of uh, where it bounced around a little bit. Obviously, th this move up and down was nothing. So ignore these two candles. But uh, right around here, 70, 50. So you pull back a dollar, look to see maybe a short here, 70, 35 uh, or something right here in Starbucks on a downside side uh, there on some not great numbers, but wow, uh, the futures still uh, keep pushing up here, up 1.57% on the S&P 500, and uh, yeah, today's going to be a uh, printing money day. I tweeted uh, out to some money being printed there and dollar dollar bills, and uh, it doesn't seem to want to stop. That forever call, Greg, seems to be uh, working for us right now. All right, guys, the next one, Costco, I want to talk about uh, here. Under pressure this morning, uh, even as the company reported a 9.6% jump in same-store sales last month, uh, higher than expected, uh, pointing to an increase in traffic due to the uh, coronavirus outbreak, obviously. Uh, but Costco getting hit here a little bit this morning. We had a big move to the downside in the aftermarket yesterday. Got all the way down to 294. We're crawling our way back up here with the market back to 300 at this point. Uh, Sean, I'll come to you with this one. Uh, I mean, 2% still in negative territory for Costco. I mean, I guess 9.6% same store sales uh, isn't good. I thought that was pretty good. I don't know. I don't know anything uh, about retail. It's not my specialty. But uh, look, Costco back down to $300. Uh, and we are breaking it right now, uh, Brendan. So there you go. Uh, we just did break that $300 mark. We like that as a, as a bottom. But yeah, 294 Wow, what a great buy that would have been uh, yesterday. And as you can see here, we're hovering up to the upside. And Costco is one of those stocks that hasn't been hit at all, uh, really, going into this thing. Uh, you know, look how choppy this is. Obviously, Obviously, when the market is up or down two or three thousand points, uh, Costco is going to be back and forth. But we're right at that level again, three hundred dollars. This seems like a good one. They've got their online uh, sales rocking and rolling now as well. Uh, very clean stores. Everyone's doing their social distancing. They actually even wipe the carts for you before you go in. So I think that Costco. Look, people aren't canceling their memberships. I can guarantee you that. And uh, more people are most likely going to be signing up for memberships. And you get a ten percent same store. Uh, sale number so I was actually telling the wife this morning that I wanted to buy some Costco down here but then obviously we see what just happened uh, in this market and uh, we bumped up higher so I like Costco it's right at a $300 mark if you are gonna play the long I think you got to give it at least to this VWAP which is 297.50 so I'd say you got to give this thing at least three or four dollars uh, in both directions today yeah the only thing I'm gonna add to that is look you talked about that great 294 price in this market with uh, lots of volatility and liquidity sometimes drying up a little bit uh, you want to watch these levels you go back to Monday the breakout at the open was right at that same 294 price. You got the run all the way to 310 uh, midweek there. And then coming off on that you know, report, uh, 294 is exactly pretty much the bottom in the aftermarket. So you see these support and resistance levels. This is why we call them out. This is why you tune in at 9 o'clock, guys. So uh, that's what it's all about. I'm looking at that 300 as well. If it comes upside to about 306, 307, I mean, that would feel a little extended. And I'd probably be fading in front of that just as it was such a wall uh, going into those numbers last night. Uh, all right, Neil. Uh, another one uh, you and I were talking about uh, yesterday afternoon, Zoom video conferencing. Google came out yesterday afternoon and said they've banned employees from using uh, the company's video conferencing software because of security concerns. The U.S. Senate coming out this morning uh, echoing the same thing. So uh, U.S. Senate not allowing members to use uh, Zoom either. So a big move to the downside, obviously, in the afternoon yesterday. We did recover somewhat, but kind of opening in the same area around 118 for ZM. 
Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You're basically right back at that 118. It was falling off before that number came out. You know, we got as low as 112. 110 is really, really good support on the daily chart uh, when you look at, his, at Zoom. And it felt like, you know, before 830 here, uh, we got the, you know, the jobs report, and of course, and more importantly, uh, Chairman Powell with his 2.3 trillion. This is what it's all about. Uh, you got a big bounce off of 115. That's why we're back at that 118, 119 range. It looks like an opportunity to break through 120. I've been fooled before uh, on Zoom. One thing I will say is I I'm probably going to take at least one or two shots to be fading this one to the south side if the market fails at 2800. I just think Zoom is a stock uh, that I've never had success trading in the first couple of minutes. The spread opens up a little bit too much unless you get it running into a major level. And in this case, it would have to be all the way up here at 120, uh, 123 or so, which I don't see happening or giving you a test of that 112 or 110. So either way, I'm probably looking to fade this one at the future stall out in front of 2800. You know, Zoom's still under a tremendous amount of pressure. And you look at that daily chart. Uh, ultimately, it's been coming all the way back in from the 165 top. It hasn't quite reached that big support at 100. Let's see if it can break that 110 at some point. I'm not saying it happens today, uh, but this is one of the names that will be fading if the market rolls over. Yeah, Zoom, I just, just another look here on the daily chart. Don't be afraid to punch short also uh, 114 here, it looks like. Uh, I don't mind this level. It bounced off there a couple times uh, in the past. 114, 114, 114, 114, and then finally breaks it, and then you see the move to 165, 170. So uh, this is that 114 level right here. I think if, just to put a line here for you, and I know some guys are asking uh, about this in the chat, but uh, right here, guys, I mean, this is 114. It looks pretty good to me. If it fails this level, uh, right here, then yeah, here's a little 50 period moving average you can see up here. That's what I like to use on the daily chart. Just a simple moving average, 50 period is right here at one. I mean, it'll adjust today once we open, but 112 basically. So not that you want to only take $2 on this one, but I think a 114 break definitely gets you to 112 and may even, may even guys, get you to 104, 105. Uh, so if you want a big time uh, runner today, I think uh, Zoom and uh, congratulations to whoever was asking about that. Uh, Ustab, I think that's a good one today. Zoom Media, I, I'd fade it. And yeah, like Neil said, if you could take something around 118, 120, even better. All right, guys, well, let's go over to energy stocks. We mentioned uh, uh, oil prices obviously up significantly, 5.5% now for crude to the upside. OPEC meeting today uh, said to possibly lead to further production cuts coming as far as uh, OPEC countries are concerned. Uh, as a result, we're seeing a big bump in crude. Oxy here leading the way, surprisingly, in the pre-market as far as energy stocks. I mean, we can look at any of these, but I just noticed this uh, Oxy up nearly 8% already. Nice move to the upside yesterday in the afternoon. We're kind of extending that game back above 16 here. Uh, Sean, I mean, uh, you typically like to look at uh, XOM. What do you think of Oxy here? I actually was looking at XOM, so I wasn't <laughs> expecting Oxy, but yeah, no, you know what? 9% is, 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 is monstrous, and we, we talk about that. You see the move in oil up 4% uh, today, so does it, it makes sense that Oxy's down here uh, up at 9, but look, I like playing key level breaks, and I mean 17 is right, right here, and that could be something. You do have the VWAP down here at 16.50. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you have to watch crude oil. I think these names are a little overblown here. I know Uncle Carl is a big uh, investor in this, and Carl Icahn uh, on a daily chart here. We're all the way back. I mean, it's like a U-shaped recovery here. Uh, you make this move down from $43 uh, basically in late February. Wow, $43. Down to nine. Uh, what a pickup that would have been. And now swooping around and coming to 17. Uh, this top is 21. We're not going to get there today. Uh, and this little mark right here is 1650 so I would say you could use 1650 uh, as a possible area if you are long where you give it up at some point but uh, I'm not you know I don't know Neil do you have any opinions on Oxy? I mean, we've done almost two million shares I was looking at that same you as well and I think when you're trading the energy names today you got to remember we got that meeting coming up in the afternoon and is, everyone's obviously optimistic about it but at the same time you know you don't want to dig in too deep I think you're probably scalping a little bit more you can go aggressive I guess in the morning relative to the afternoon today uh, but it's probably that same breakout level you talked about the 1650 but that's what it's essentially all about I think what will be even better than that will be if we can actually hold above this level and start working back to that 21 you talked about and then you'll have fantastic support but it hasn't been established yet and we're still waiting for news there I mean oxy yeah you might take a shot at this one in front of 1651 time but if it fails it's not the kind of thing you want to be stubborn about
All right, guys, let's uh, shift over to uh, some COVID-19 related stocks. MBRX, huge move to the upside yesterday. We were looking at it throughout the show. Uh, it's still up uh, about 3% in the pre-market here, but uh, just noticed uh, it has come off as the market has recovered a little bit, that kind of inverse relationship uh, taking hold again today uh, in MBRX, but still up about 3% on the day. Yeah, monster move to the upside yesterday. Uh, we're kind of in these afternoon levels. Worth, I think, watching this one again today for a flush, maybe below this 120 obviously a dollar even just below us here uh, uh, for MBRX guys you know what I, I actually came in here really liking the the one the 140 and the 150 levels I mean I always like to look at what happens in the afternoon on date uh, on day one of some of these movers and if there's an obvious level you can work off of and you can sort of see a top here at one at a buck 40 and we'll zoom in just so you can see it a little bit better sorry guys uh, you can actually see that level right here at one on 140 uh, we tried trading above it on light volume pre-market we're at three million now hovering below it so there is some activity there that's just one of those things we're all probably looking at this short in in front of that level but you can also take a breakdown of you know 128 is this bottom here 130 uh, so you can maybe grab some shares on the way down but you're not going to let that 140 get away from you. I'm not looking at the pre-market high here I'm going to be looking at uh, the, at the top in the afternoon for MBRX and the volume is so big on this one that you just can't hesitate uh, to jump in and take five ten cents here or there even if you think there's a bigger move coming maybe down to a buck. Uh, I did want to uh, just review our Disney uh, talk there a little bit because uh, right now I gave you that 106.70 level. Obviously, uh, I wish that would have held because look at this. I was going to pound that. We talked about it. I even you know, put down multiple uh, little notes here about this level. 106.70 right here. It looked great on a daily chart as well. Uh, we've broken through there and we're rocketing up a dollar. The market did not even uh, care uh, to stop here in the pre. Uh, here is a market on open and balanced locator. I know we're going to get to these in a minute, but here's CCL Carnival uh, has been big every single day. Uh, so once again, another 1.4 million shares here. Delta Marathon, uh, another uh, petroleum company. There's our Oxy right there. So I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. That's running. Most of these names on this list are going to be, here's Halliburton, here's ExoWeb, are going to be oil related names right now as we're up four and a half percent. And some of this liquidity that's being injected into the economy is obviously creating uh, some pent up demand here uh, for the energy sector. So you're seeing a lot of energy names on the market on open and balance locator. So I just want to bring that uh, to everyone's attention. Should be a fun roller coaster, at least in the first five or six minutes. All right, guys, another uh, virus related stock here. We've traded this one on the show before. Tizania uh, Life Sciences. TLSA, very important we get this ticker right, guys. TLSA, not TSLA. You don't want to be going, uh, you know, punching into a thousand shares of TSLA. This one, uh, TLSA, up about 70% here. It's coming off a uh, little bit from this $394 area. I mean, $350 obvious support here in the pre market, but up significantly. There's been a lot of talk uh, over the past couple of days about these antibody tests and uh, testing for antibodies in people who have had the virus already. Uh, uh, this company coming out saying that they have now developed uh, some sort of vaccine based on those antibodies. So uh, that's the move for TLSA, guys. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at 410 on the daily uh, on on the chart here. There was a nice little bit of a break. We had to actually get, make sure we had the locates a little bit earlier on in the morning. That was very very early. Uh, so you almost can't have that trade unless you're a you know a really early, early riser. But there's been good volume the entire time through. I'm now looking at the 380 level on this one. Uh, this one is going to be the bane of my existence, Brendan, because as you mentioned, uh, you know very similar related to a Tesla and I have them next to my next to me I'm gonna try not to make that mistake on my quote board when I'm going back and forth I do like this one I think you got to give it a stop range because of the liquidity concerns you'll have here I mean you look at the level two you contrast this to a, like an MBRX where you can throw around a bunch of shares because there's so much liquidity not as much here in, in, in this name so I think uh, when you look at that 380 area you're probably giving it a few cents or so not necessarily using a stop order trigger uh, maybe you have to trade this one manually access liquidity as you see it on the level two uh, that's probably the way to go about trading TLSA without getting burned. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, will, I, I won't be looking at that name. I'll be looking at uh, TSLA most likely at some point. Tesla up to $560. I did want to talk about Apple right here. It's not on our board to talk about, I don't think. Uh, but you're going to see right here, 270. I mean, look at this move. We're up 80 handles right now from the, from the start uh, of this move. Up to 227.84. Wow, what a move now, 2%. Uh, Apple making a huge move as well. From 263 all the way to 270 right here. I just wanted to bring up this note. Uh, and it was right here. 
here. Uh, it was on the 7th, so two days ago, uh, you saw Apple touch out at 271.75, had some problems around this 271 area. So uh, if you take Apple long through 271, just be a little careful. It has had some resistance up here at that level. Apple's what a monster. I mean, we were only at last week, I was just telling this to Neil, 238, 239, uh, and now you're up 40 bucks from there, uh, well, almost 30 bucks, uh, to 271. So watch out for Apple on such a great run. I mean, this is a 10 minute chart, uh, and you just see what's happened up seven dollars uh here for apple and something very similar uh to mr softy if you call up msft uh right now this is a favorite stock of mine obviously it's not going to go seven dollars but uh still a nice little four dollars top side and if you pull it back as well uh you have this top right here 168 uh was a few problems here uh for microsoft so we're going to touch that today i assume and it could happen right off the open look to possibly fade something through 168 uh, or punch hella long uh if it does get there with some movement all right, guys, we'll go to uh, uh, micro cap uh, land. This one, uh, U.S. Well Services, USWS. This thing was up more than 400% at one point this morning. Uh, now only, only 264%. This is a company that has a $13 million market cap uh, gapping higher after securing a three-year contract for uh, uh, well services. Uh, they supply fleets to fracking companies. Uh, so gapping up on that news, big move aftermarket yesterday. I mean, it's already come off a lot from 170 all the way down to a dollar here, but any kind of retest of 120, 130, even 140 area uh, should be a decent short for USWS, guys. Yeah, that's one that, you know, I'm sort of sitting here regretting, and I mentioned this to you guys in the chat. There's a retracement play. It was, it was off like 30% already from the top, yet still up over 350% at the time when I was looking at it. So it really was setting up for that fade play. Uh, we did manage to get this consolidation here in the pre-market uh, at, at, at a buck 30. It was a great short here, and specific, you know, specifically in front of 130 or 128. And you know, we got some out here, 22, and then we got the rest out. I saw a big seller uh, on the offer there for about 50,000 shares or so. As it was getting chewed up, this is early in the pre-market before, uh, you know, when there's a lot, not as much volume coming in there. Uh, I did end up taking the position off using that liquidity, uh, and then it continues to flush. And there was another leg down here just in front of a dollar. Uh, you can see it now trading basically at 99 cents. This one's going to be a good one. Uh, I think I want it to pop back into the 130, 150 range. Maybe we'll have another opportunity to short it. I just took my first shot at T. LSA, and uh, when I put in the symbol in my level two here, I did type it incorrectly, had Tesla up for a second and switched it back, but uh, I want to work that position we talked about in front of that 80 uh, as well, but you got to have not a hard stop. You don't use those stop orders, guys. I think you want to trade that one manually. It's pretty thinly traded for a small name. Oh man, I just keep looking back here at uh, Disney, and it's—I oh. uh, I, I really feel like we missed that one uh, for sure. But uh, you know, that was the one here. Where are you guys? Yeah, I wrote down on on here Disney. Well, I don't want to go too hard. Disney with some multiple stars. Uh, it's hard to see that. One sixty-seven, one hundred six seventy. I can't zoom in on it. Forget it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the point is, is that that was a little bit of a missed opportunity. But I do like this one though. I do like Microsoft through one sixty-seven forty. Uh, it stops there. I don't know what this market's going to do, so I'm going to be hands off. Honestly. Uh, all the levels I wrote down are obviously gone right now. Uh, I like Starbucks to the south side, but that's been moving up. I liked Apple at that 271 level. We could get there. We're going to wait to see if that happens. And the next one that I want to talk about quickly that we didn't really get to uh, too much other than looking at that imbalance locator was our friend Carnival Cruise Lines. And we are way, I crushed this one yesterday. Uh, all week, uh, we've been hitting this one really great. Um, so I did a little trade test down here at 1211. I wish I would have stayed into that one. Uh, that was just a test to make sure our software was working. Uh, 1211. 85 here uh, to the top side. I like that as a long if it breaks it. Let's check out the imbalance locator before we go. Only two minutes to go. Make sure it's still up here. Wow, Ford Neil pops out of nowhere. Uh, we didn't see that when Whoa. we checked up okay. earlier. So let's check in on some Ford uh, and Carnival Cruise Line still there. I'll click on Ford and see what it's doing. Yeah, you always want to see one of these names uh, come out of yeah, nowhere. Five on to the five locator. fifty, ten percent, Neil. Wow. Yeah, okay. that, I mean, that's a big move to the upside. It's a 10% move. The market is coming up as well, but then you see that in bounce. Ford's going to come up Why immediately is that, on the radar. I wonder. With we'll just a minute out. to go, uh, jump to the daily chart. You're going to see about 565 is the first level coming up, and uh, it's not that U-shape that we're looking at on some of these other depressed names, but it is a bit of a resistance point uh, that's just above this pre-market high that we'll be working with, guys. So Ford's going to just jump onto the radar right now. I'm also looking at Starbucks, which is 
holding up around the top. I'm looking at it at 71.25 uh, right now, and I did like the 70.10 level. It is trying to roll over here. You're seeing it sort of hold this end as the ES uh, below that 2800, we dig it all the way to 2780. We're now basically in a tight range. That's going to be that key level that we're working off of, of at least the next one anyway. So watch the futures uh, very heavily with some of these names uh, that are going to be the higher flyers. I am still trying to work in a TLSA. MBRX uh, just made a test of that 140 area, guys. So this is one of those situations where you want to let this test your 140 uh, right here off of the open. If it fails, this is going to be a short both through 128 to 130 at the bottom, but also in front of that 140. But you can't let it break with only about 15 seconds to go here, guys. We do have the countdown coming in. It's going to be Rob from IT on the bell. Whoa. That countdown just dropped a little bit early. Uh, yeah, we're, no, it's already going. We only have eight seconds to go. Uh, we got to uh, get the better get the organized, guys. You guys. And the market's open, go. so let's go. Forget about the bell. It doesn't matter. It There's doesn't Valeria. Matter. Wave, Valeria. How are you? The market is already open. Don't worry about hitting it. Okay, so now we're going. <laughs> Don't worry about hitting it, Valeria. Don't worry. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, thank you, Valeria, for that. All right. Uh, we're going to look at Apple here, 268 and change. Uh, the market is open and fading back down. We're going to wait for 267.50 uh, or so to come through, 267.25. We'll see about taking some shares there. If we do get this pullback, looks like we're getting it a little bit now. Uh, this is a nice little VWAP spot, 268 and change. Maybe we'll text small Apple right now, guys. Yeah, not Tesla, TLSA. We did grab that short position. I talked about it in front of 80. 72s we were able to get here, was not able to add. I tried to slam some uh, here at the open at 360. Didn't get it. I'll add on a pullback if we can. It's about to take 350. Big buyer here at 352. If I had a few more shares, maybe we'd be scalping some off in front of it uh, might not be a op bad opportunity to go ahead and do that but futures rolling over like we mentioned gonna watch Starbucks if it heads down but right now it's headed up towards 72 even yeah yeah and Apple uh, we just tested really really small right now we're gonna start averaging in and take a bigger position soon uh, near this 267 and then use this kind of as an out here 266 50 if we crash down there uh, we'll get out but right now we're long Apple 267 97 so a nice little dollar to start your day off here we are long Apple right now so let's hit a home run if it can get going. Uh, we're not sure, but our average position right now, 267.97. We're going to wait to see if that can print us uh, near 269-ish. Uh, I'd like to take the top of this wick. Put an order here, 268.50 maybe, guys. Yeah, and here comes a 13 even on Carnival. It actually just faded off that. Broke through right at the open, got to 9. Rolled over just a little bit with the futures. Uh, we also just got MBRX. Watch out for that 140 level. That's one you don't want to uh, run into. If Carnival comes down to 1220, remember, that's a big, big level. So we like that one. If we continue to roll over, however, guys, use that 13 is a bit of a top, but it's TLSA time for me, guys. We got 372 to the short side here and uh, just broke that 350. So look, we can take off our patented sort of 10% type of move right around this level here, guys. So we're working into this one. Uh, we want to see if we can add some more shares there. Whoops. And I accidentally reversed long. I don't want those shares. We're going to get out of that flat back into the shorts, guys. This is where we want to be on TLSA. So we get out, work back into the short. We take a quick 30 cent win and then run back into this one. The pre-market low here was that 340. That's why you're out in front and then getting back into the trade. So MBRX and TLSA short side. Let's go downside on those names, even though the market's strong. Yeah, the market is pretty strong here. We're going to wait for Starbucks uh, to break down through the 71 uh, and get to this 70, 60 level like we're talking about. We're going to hit that short if it goes. But look at Apple right now. Uh, we still have this long 267.90 uh, so we took half about not third out sorry a third out up here at 268.60 uh, for 80 cent winner we're gonna see it's bounced off here a couple times we'll sneak another order in here capture some profits but look at the futures a nice little bounce down uh, move down I guess from 84 down here to 70 let's see what Apple can do on the downside I think that Starbucks will trigger uh, at some point I did hear ready for Brennan but uh, if yeah, we are. Okay, what's up, Brandon? Yeah, Square, guys, moving higher in a hurry here. Just went from 58 and a half to above $60. Market coming in a bit, but uh, very strong off the bat here. Square up 6% so far today, guys. A uh, 115 even alert here. Zoom came down three bucks right what? off of the open as the futures rolled over. So it tried to test that low. This was a pre-market bottom, guys, and it tried to take this one out. It just failed to do so. This could be an interesting pullback play if the futures are going to uh, hold uh, below that 28, guys. We talked about only wanting to be short this name, Zoom. Uh, it's not that you never go long, but I think it's an opportunity uh, to be a seller. Some stronger names in the, in the market. Uh, Zoom is on my short list. We're going to look for a 115 break. Also looking for a pullback into this range here, 116.50 uh, or so. 
Yeah, no, and uh, great look there. That, I'm glad you brought that up because Zoom, I want to pound the pavement there uh, on Zoom if we can get it through uh, 114. We're going to be hitting that one uh, for sure. Uh, Apple coming back down here as I look. Oh, my goodness. You couldn't even... What 50 happened? pennies instantly it, for, through 115, so no chance even getting the short. Here comes 114. Uh, didn't even get it. There goes. Here comes 114 as well. So look at the spread. I'm miss the miss one. It. Miss that 115. We talked about the spread. This is why the first five minutes is tricky in Zoom. You see, you see me sit there and miss. I will take it on the way back up if it tries to hit me here, guys. So I'm still offering in front of 115. I'd like to catch this one on a pullback if I can get it that way. Wow, how low did Apple come there? 267.47. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hit that zoom. I mean, now coming right back to the top side, uh, we should be averaging, not averaging in, but looking to maybe take a short here. I know Neil uh, is probably gonna build something there. That's gonna be a good one. Uh, Apple though, that's my only position uh, right now. I wanted to get long, 267.50. I pulled that order, uh, so maybe I'm gonna put a little lower, 267 uh, in change on Apple. The only spot I have right now is 267.90, so we're flat on Apple. It's been a light day for me, uh, not really getting into anything as I see. Oil moving up now 7%. We need to look at some of those names like Oxy and XOM, Marathon and whatnot. Going to check some charts out on those ones. But uh, just waiting for this Apple. 266.90 uh, is a decent break if that does happen uh, to the downside. 266.90. Let's go short Apple, guys. So we'll slap shot our first little action in and out on MBRX. I'm going to continue to hold a bit of a short position there and uh, constantly also work a bit of a TLSA in there. Uh, but Zoom holds the bottom so far. We did jump in in front of that 115. It holds 114. So the first thing you got to think about here is all the way back to this little leg here at 116. That'll be my first out. Uh, we will jump back into the short to see if there's another opportunity later. But you have to have some stop levels. If it breaks that, I'm only going to risk about a buck 25 in slippage. Thinking if you get through 114, it's a simple path to about two and a half, three dollars. So I like the two to one uh, there, but I'm not going to dig in too deep. Just given you know, the first five minutes, the first 10 minutes on Zoom can be a tricky one, guys. Yeah, Zoom's a good one here, 115.50, uh, not, a, not, not a bad short, though. Um, again, if we could test my Unity, that would be great, but I thought I heard... I think we got Brennan. What Brennan, got, what's up? Uh, Malincroft, guys, two days in a row here. We mentioned this one right off the bat yesterday morning. Had a huge move all the way up to 280. Malincroft now 10% this morning. Uh, broke $3 uh, right off the bat. Big time volume behind this move as well, guys. All right. Yeah, all right, that's definitely a look. Malincroft's a name that we were watching yesterday rather heavily. Uh, but I want to get over here to uh, Starbucks. It's trying to roll over with the futures, but we're getting a bit of a bounce in the market. So, you know, I feel like uh, the shorts and the small cap names have worked out for me so far, but uh, Zoom might not. Starbucks, however, is looking like it might want to break back down. As I say it, there goes 71. You know what? Don't forget about talking about the structure Starbucks. of the deal. There's that 71 break. 70.10 is a massive, massive level uh, when I was looking at it on the daily chart. So you could catch a little bit of a bounce there, guys. So big flush as we talk about it there in Starbucks. Yeah, we're short a lot here uh, on Starbucks. This is that position that we looked at. I gave you this in the pre-market. Uh, 70.40, I really liked it. Uh, so we go short 70.40 uh, and we get one quarter out uh, at 70.20. So it's a quick little 20 cent scalp. Uh, but we are looking. It's good now. I think it's good now. Uh, it's coming back down here, 70-20 uh, to the downside. So we're going to hold on to this uh, Starbucks trade and our Apple trade, though, uh, heading to the upside here. So we'll take a little bit more off of that one, and we catapult that one as, yeah, here goes Apple back to the upside, guys. Let's see what we can do with this one. Brandon, what do you got? Uh, lots, guys. 25% here. Multiple upgrades on this uh, name today. JP Morgan included in that. Broke 1950 there. Huge volume behind this move as well uh, for BIG, guys. Big uh, we got a, we got a bit of a halt here on USWS. Big time bounce off of a buck goes all the way through to 119, and then you get an upside halt. So it's still up 335 percent. We were targeting an area of 130 to 140. So uh, it, we like to pull back short. At this point, you got to think about if it opens up higher and test that level. It could be a breakout through that price area instead of being a fade, guys. So uh, we talked about this one. Watch for the open. It should be at about 941 and change. Uh, we'll look to see if that 130 level gets tested. And instead of going only short, we will work that long if there's a break. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so I'm just looking here, uh, talking about this Starbucks and looking to see where do we get out if there is a problem. It's going to be 71, uh, but I don't expect there to be anything uh, issues here. So we are now short Starbucks. This is a big position uh, for me, and we continue uh, to try to move this thing down. And uh, Starbucks right now, we're short uh, 70, 40, uh, and we got a decent amount of shares here. So let's see uh, if this one can't keep running down uh, to the downside. I have a bid here at 16. Uh, we'll see if we can't get filled there. And then more to come, hopefully breaking 
through, $70 uh, would be nice. Let's put a bid in, 70 even, and see if we can't take some more okay, profits yeah. here on a nice little Starbucks trade. Uh, we talked about it going short. If the market did roll over, uh, Neil and I both look like this name uh, as it's one of the only names that's down today, Starbucks. Yeah, uh, Brendan, what do you got, buddy? Uh, another one moving here, guys. JD.com, huge move, uh, almost 4% here. We've gone from 42 up to about 42.80 in a straight line off the open here. Uh, they announced that their uh, first robot delivery uh, robot in China uh, delivered groceries yesterday. So JD.com moving higher on that news, guys. Over here on Carnival Cruise Line, I think I so initial move up, failing at 13 even, uh, it then makes a move no, to the on, downside the before retesting 13. It there. spikes up with now. a failure at an even price. Uh, so for me, it gives you an opportunity here on 15 million in volume to risk, you know, 5, 10 pennies on a 13 even break and short in front of it. Watch out, the futures are coming hard, so it's not going to be a massive position size, but I like taking this crack and then 13 can be almost a reversal long for you guys. So that's the idea over here in Carnival, going to see if we can't work this trade, but it's running up to it very, very quickly closely here guys so right away oh, we're going to test this level yeah okay and starbucks coming right back to the top side there we did not get out enough down here at 70 our best out was at 16 uh, right now but starbucks coming to the upside look at this es man this is just climbing 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 uh, like we were just talking about we're back to days high again uh so what we still have on right now uh we have on this apple trade which is long at 267.81 so that's a dollar uh in the money right now so we hit the cowbell for that one but our starbucks trade uh that's the one that's a little bit of a problem breaking back upside watch the 71 break uh, if that does break we'll get out of a I don't know, half of our position. I still like it, though, to the downside. Maybe we should be averaging in, but I do not really, I uh, really do not want to fight this uh, futures move here as uh, it's going to be taken over here. So we'll have to maybe average into a short 71.50 or not, but we just get out of some of our Starbucks there on that 71 break, guys. MBRX breaks 140. We reverse to the long side here to see if that level can't be a key one to the upside. Same thing with Carnival Cruise. We did take some out at 08 when we got the old ones long, just to make sure. And when you get that break, if it's going to be a fail break, you put some money in your pocket, so that if it does fail, you are going to have a muted loss because you took advantage of the shorters covering and then getting some out there. So we took some profit. It's not working the money for us in front of 13, uh, but we're now looking at MBRX. If it holds above this 140, fantastic. We'll run with this as long as, long as we can here, uh, but you have to watch the midpoint here at 135. That's all I'm going to be risking on the MBRX long. TLSA is back to that 340 mark. I want to see it retest 380 ideally, uh, but I'm watching very closely to see MBRX. Uh, no, sorry, not MBRX. We're looking for that reopen uh, on one of those other names here. That was USWS, guys. We want to make sure when this reopens, and it just did, I wanted it to be higher, ideally. Uh, we're going to get it. We're going to get a bit of a low move here, but I wanted it retesting 130. That's the ideal move. There goes Carnival Cruise. See if we can't take some out at, at 13, 20 or so. There's another winner. But, Brendan, what do you got for it? Uh, airlines are going as well here, guys. Just watching UAL, 13% now. It held 30 on the pullback after the open. So 30 was support there. Just broke 30 one for UAL guys one wow okay <laughs> Uh, yeah. Some of these stocks, nutsos. Uh, I'm going to hang on to this, uh, CCL. this CCL Carnival Cruise position, the last third here. Uh, you can see we reversed long. We did get some out, uh, stair stepping on the way up. You take the, the short, you risk 10 cents, you then make it right back, and then 20 on the second third. I'm going to go with a basically break even stop. We'll give it to about 12.95 or so, just to allow it to test that 13 even area. Otherwise, let's see if we can't make a run in the market here at the top of 2800, and then see how far Carnival can go. It's up 10 percent. We've seen bigger moves than that, Sean. Oh yeah, it could easily take uh, that out. We're averaging into our uh, Disney trade, but right now our Apple one is monstrous. We talked about it coming up to this 271 trade. Uh, we're long still here, 268, uh, 267.81, sorry. Uh, we are now long Apple. So uh, we're gonna put an order around here. Uh, the high of the day has been this 270.25. We'll see if we can't take a clean $3 winner uh, on this one. I'm averaging in, uh, you can see here on our Starbucks, we did get blown out here at 71. I've taken a few different shorts uh, now since then. So I'm still believing leaving in this uh, move on Starbucks to the downside, uh, you know, a bunch of shorts we did cover there. We're back into this game. So let's see uh, if Starbucks wants to make another move down. I'm just going to have to use this 7150 here uh, as a top. But if these futures keep going, uh, this could be an unlimited long day, uh, it's looking like right now. So we'll have to wait to see. But uh, Starbucks right now is hurting me a little bit. 
uh, as it keeps going upside. Don't know why I keep trying to fade this. I do love that square call, though. We're going to go over to that one. Up $63. Two Here goes Carnival again, guys. Up to thirteen fifty, and I was just about to say it was up 10%. Now we're up 12%. You know, we talked about this even those quarters. We just took out thirteen fifty. Now it's time to slide my stop order. Forget about twelve ninety five. Now that we're long thirteen oh one and we're deep in the money, you're looking at this sort of level here, maybe thirteen ten. I wouldn't be crazy. It wouldn't be crazy to go thirteen twenty five. So you know, I'm going to go with the stop at the thirteen twenty five. The higher mark, the long is in, guys, and it's working like gangbusters here. Uh, big time moving Carnival Cruise. Yeah, we have the same thing happening here on AAL. I mean, we're up huge already, but do we think it can uh, go more? Maybe. Uh, let's see what happens right now. Uh, AAL. Uh, if you think the market's going to fade off, uh, this is a great short right now. 12.75 uh, bouncing off here a couple times now. Uh, we're going to see what happens, but AAL uh, making a little bit of a move down here uh, as the futures, they don't want to move. Uh, we're going to get up to 2,800 here uh, in a second. It's just been tick, 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 tick. They tried to come back before fading right back down again, so uh, we're going to wait to see here. 12.75 coming through uh, on American Airlines. That's a good one. My Starbucks is getting close uh, to 71.50. Uh, I'm not going to reverse long, but that will be the spot that we give up uh, our trade here on Starbucks. Well, we'll get out of half uh, and then we'll see what happens. But uh, right now, Starbucks. Uh, you know what? I just covered at 13.42 for a 40 cent win. And the reason being is I think we can re-enter this trade if we take a run at that 2,800. Uh, Carnival's basing around this 30 and this 50. Uh, so we'll take that big win on the 13 even break. Brendan, what do you got for us? Looking for a uh, lower priced energy name uh, showing all kinds of strengths, guys. ET, energy transfer here up 9% on the day. Just made a big move back from 580 up to about 620. Broke that uh, day high on volume, guys. Sorry, right. what was that name there? Energy ET? transfer, ET. ET, ET. Okay, yeah. There ET. goes Apple, guys. Wow, that's a big move here. Up to 270. This is exactly uh, where we said it would probably go to here. Uh, 270.25. Uh, we're long still. 267.81. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be a big trade uh, for us right now. Up $2 into the money uh, right now. We're still waiting uh, for that AAL to break. I don't know how your CCL is doing, uh, but AAL bouncing off the top right now. Giving a great little pullback. This is why you get out in front of 1350, guys. You get the market t testing that 2800. We take it out on the way back. It fails at 1350. You'll see me short this on some of those small cap patterns, but it's a good reason sometimes to get out of a long trade. And this is what we're going to do here. I like the retest of that 13, so you might see me jump in here and dig into a bit of a bounce long in front of it. We already had a stop looking at that 12 and 95 ish area, so jump back into the long at 13, 16. If we get a retest, I do like the opportunity to take 20, 30 cent scalp on this one the second time through. But uh, already a good trade on CCL. Uh, we'll jump back into some other names as well. I'm noticing TLSA uh, back to 350. I wanted it at 380. It hasn't quite gotten there yet, guys. Yeah, we um, we punched long this AAL, but then when it didn't go, we just started getting out. So uh, we not, right now we still have only half of our long. We are long still right now. Uh, American, a smaller position, uh, but we do have a long right now at 12.75. It's not a good one. Uh, we are fading back down, which is great for my Starbucks. So I'm going to have to dump some of this. 12.60, 12.50 will probably be my out on this one. Let's hope that Starbucks can uh, make the opposite move uh, of AAL. Well, you know, go down like AAL, but short Starbucks, long AAL, and long that Apple trade still, guys. Yeah, I'm going to very, very quickly take uh, the quick scalp, and they'll tell you why here on uh, CCL. We take this one off as we just turned it. around at that 2800 again, run out of a little bit of juice, and I think there's an opportunity to just take your profits, look for a better entry point that has a better, a more defined risk. So we'll take our stops off on that one. I want to get you guys back to the name that we ah, started with, Starbucks. and that was USWS. Uh, it did make a run at the 130. I wanted to see it, see it actually get into the 130 to 140 range. It turned around on a dime at 130. So didn't get me my entry. You know, we're a little bit too cautious, I think. I like to let it enter a target range instead of uh, maybe just touch it there. But it is coming back in. Watch for a one even break on USWS. Brendan, what do you have? Uh, CLSK, guys, uh, another name with uh, COVID-19 related news this morning. CLSK on the NASDAQ here, 194%, just pulling back to three even. Watch three even here. We got as far as uh, looks like 415 on that uh, push to the upside, but uh, big move uh, to say the least uh, for CLSK, guys. CLSK, okay, we'll have a look at that one. Someone asking uh, on the chat, <laughs> I did see something about Disney. Uh, so come on, Starbucks, just uh, faded off that 7150. Look, uh, if we could get this price again, I'll take it. This is the price I liked, 10670. So uh, we'll see if Disney wants to print that. Uh, if it comes back up to 10670, uh, that's a decent long, and you can play it off 105. So uh, give yourself about $2 uh, worth of space on 
at Disney Long, it looks like, guys, this Starbucks is getting very, very close. Uh, we did come up to 71.50 already. I uh, would love to see this thing get lower. Uh, our current position is 70, 75 uh, short. So, yikes. Uh, I don't know if that's going to come through or not. Uh, with this market touching 2,800, Neil, uh, we touched 27.97 yep. uh, before fading out. So, watch out for this 2,800. If you are long, uh, this may be one level to watch out for a break. Your longs could get even longer uh, if we do test that level, guys. 100%. And someone meant, asked about Tesla and uh, I accidentally typed in the wrong symbol, but I got the right one up now, guys. Uh, 575 was just the top now. When I went to the daily chart uh, earlier in the morning, look, there was a bit of a breakout opportunity uh, through about 566, 570, actually a level that we talked about uh, in yesterday's session, I do believe. So look, it did give you a potential break. This is what you would have been looking at here. And ultimately, you have to have this one in the first 10 minutes when it gives you the break of the level from yesterday. It's about 568 here when you look at it on the chart. It's only about a $5 scalp. And that's what I've been finding. You know, you've been looking for cleaner $10, $15 moves in Tesla. And lately, it's really been these $5 scalps. Well, that's probably what I'm going to dig in and try to do. I am looking at CCL, which just continues to turn around at 1350. This is now the second time that I'm seeing Carnival bump up to this level and fade in. And I sort of took that small win on the second trade of the long side. You know, the, 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 the fade trader in me wants to take this short in front of 1350 with a reversal. It's gonna be hard to get away from, given that we haven't touched that 2800. It's a big level on the ES. There's so much room to roll over when you're up 18, 11%, that if you can structure the trade, why, why not just go ahead and do it? So we're gonna grab some short in Carnival in front of 1350 with a reverse long. Yeah, our, so our Starbucks is not going well, but our AAL is coming back. Uh, so we're going to see what happens here off that nether uh, 1275 break that could happen right now uh, again on this name. It looks like our Starbucks will come out at, there it goes, will come out at, uh, it just, just did come out at 7150. So uh, we tried the short, guys. I did like that idea, uh, but it did fade against us right there. Uh, Starbucks, a little bit of pain there uh, as it does not want to go. I will reinvent, re reshort this thing just a matter of where and when because uh, I don't like this name today but we are almost back to positive on it so uh, we are gonna fall in a hole uh, on Starbucks we tried to go short uh, that name but failed it so uh, I don't know it looks like it's going to be a runner to the north side Starbucks we're still looking for Disney to pop through uh, my Apple's still going and AAL bumping off that top right now. here's a strong one and Co we talked about Costco this morning and certainly they had the 300 that 300 break it's managing to hold a above the pre-market high here, this 301 at least. Uh, so if we do get a rollover uh, on the futures here, you're probably gonna watch that 301. Uh, that could be a break to the downside on Starbucks. Good volume here at a million shares uh, done. But really, uh, the story is gonna be, and I'm gonna go to the NQ because we've basically been talking about the ES primarily. Uh, we rolled over at 2800, just shy of it on the, on the S&P futures. And the NASDAQ here at 83 and a quarter, similar story. So if we actually fail to get back above this 8300, you're gonna look for some of these shorts to come back in. That's why I'm working into a short and carnival here. Started at 35. I'll add to it in the 40s if I can get it. Uh, Brennan, what do you have? Uh, ABTR in New York, guys, up 5% now. What a move this thing had from 1180 all the way up to $14. They came out with uh, some uh, forecast, uh, or they updated their forecast for the current quarter and said they're basically going to be fine after initially saying that their current quarter might come in on the low side of expectations. So uh, we did gap down uh, initially 1180 all the way to 14 on ABTR, guys. AVTR avatar, but already in the money for us is that Carnival Cruise fade. You can see we grabbed the short on the way back in. You know, I'm going to allow it to retest the level and be willing to take that short as it's coming down as opposed to stepping in front. I want to see if we can't get back to that 13 area. And you think if we fail here at 2800, that's got to at least be in play. And I am adding to this position, as I mentioned, if we get into those 40s in front of that 1350, guys. So Carnival Cruise short, that's all I have on right now as I'm also having a quick look uh, still at that MBRX. And it's a good stock. It was great yesterday. Uh, it broke that 140. The long does not work out. So you try the short, take a little bit of profit. You reshort in front of that 140. That doesn't work out. Uh, the long reverse doesn't work. So we're one for three on this one. And the range is just not breaking. So it's going to be a sleepy one. MBRX might be off the radar for the, at least the short term uh, for me right now. Okay, guys, so I, uh, I, I reloaded the Starbucks trade. I do this often. Uh, we do get a little bit of a fail there at 71.50. So uh, as you guys can see, we went reloaded. So where's my reloaded thing? I don't know. There it is. We're reloaded. Uh, you guys know what movie that's from. Uh, put it in the chat. I sure hope you do. It's one of uh, Neil and I's favorite movies. Uh, and I'm not going to give You should be able to tell the voice. Then I'm going to hit it again. Put in the chat what movie this reloaded is I hope you guys can get that one. Uh, but we're short Starbucks classic. anyways right now. 71.25. I hope they 
take a get it, Neil. Uh, you're the one with the uh, movie knowledge, and uh, hopefully most people can get that one. Uh, Apple, I just want to uh, come in on that one quickly before I throw it back to you. Uh, 268.50 will be our out. It's bounced off a couple times. We still are this long, 267.90. I would love to get out. I do have an order parked up here uh, as well. So we'll see if we can't get out 269.50, which is coming right up right now. So see if we can't ring the registers a little bit on this Apple trade for a $1.50 winner. That could be good. My Starbucks still waiting to see uh, on this top pop off. And yes, my Unity is working, so I can now throw it to Brendan. Uh, here. Back to small cap world, guys. CNSP here, another one coming out today saying that they now have a candidate for a vaccine for COVID-19. So a big, huge 50% move here. We've already come off from 520 back to about 420, but see what happens at $4 even could be a little bit of support for CNSP, guys. Uh, good look there, Brennan can add that to the list. I just want to alert you guys to TLSA 330 bottom. I was just looking at here and I, I just threw an order uh, to see if we can't get that break. If it wants to take it out uh, to the downside, you can see this little double bottom that's being put in. I think that's a fantastic breakout. And I'll, honestly, you can give that one to about 350. So 20 cents worth of risk. It's up from a $2.17 uh, cent close yesterday. So there's lots of room. Uh, the story is going to be right now, though, that futures move into 2800. So I'm working back into that CCL trade in front of that so watch TLSA uh, watch alert here in front of 1350 Greg uh, you just asked about uh, American Airlines I, after I get more shares in this uh, CCL I'm telling you I actually saw a bit of a double top there as well so going to be worth a look to see on a breakout through 2800 if American is worth a buy yeah, and uh, right now I only have American and Starbucks, so that's all that I have on right now. Uh, but yeah, Carlito's Way, winner, winner, chicken Boom. dinner uh, for whoever gets that. I think it was Andres there. Uh, good job on that one. Uh, you win a chicken dinner uh, on nobody, I guess, on yourself. So hopefully you can enjoy that one. Uh, that'll be good. Uh, our Apple is out right now, 269.50. That's close to a $2 winner. So we hit the cash registers on that one. We haven't hit many cash registers today, but uh, hopefully that can keep flying through. Uh, our Beyond meat though. Uh, there's another runner. Those of you that have watched the show uh, for a while know that we love this name. And, well, I do for sure. Uh, Neil trades it not too often, but uh, we do like this name for a runner. Uh, we do come down to $71 all the way to 74. Just noticing that 74 top uh, right now on XOM. So sorry, on Beyond Meat. Uh, we'll wait to see what that does. The reason why I'm talking about XOM, Neil, oil names moving around. We're up 6% uh, right now on oil and we made fun of Oxy, not made fun of, but we talked about Oxy being up that 12%, and uh, yeah, it's faded off. Sorry, it was 8%. You're now up that 10% on Oxy, making new highs. Beautiful dip down here to 1650. Let's see if that happens. A couple tops here at 1720, though. Just triggered into that TLSA. It took out that 330 uh, for the time being, at least. And right now, it's looking to have a little bit of a battle in that range. You get a breakout on a name like this, you have to be willing to let it play itself out a little bit. I did talk about Jesus 350 Christ. is resistance when you look at it and I can't since see my the position. open. Or, you know, so that's going to be we a nice level it. we can work off of. Otherwise, I'll, I'll you know, you guys you're talking about a gap up like yeah, I gotta, this. I gotta There's just not way. a lot of significance until you get down a dollar or so. So it's one of those things where uh, you're going to work this one out. I can look at this level here uh, way in the past at, in front of three even, and I'll take some shares out in front of that. In case there's some consolidation, I will be happy to take at least a third off of this one for 10, 15 cents if that's what you're going to get, and then try to hold the rest for a little bit more. So we worked that short in TLSA. Haven't taken any off yet. Uh, Carnival Cruise Lines. We're Come still on, Disney. short at 13.39. That's basically flat. But here comes 2,800 guys. Yeah. We're about to take the top off. Here comes 2800. We're long Disney right now. Uh, we take out a third of our position there uh, for 30 pennies. Now we're going to wait to see what we can do on the top side right now. Disney trying to break through 107, guys. Uh, like Neil said, we either bounce off this 2800 or we don't. So right now we're long AAL. We're short. We're long Disney. And we also have this Starbucks trade. Uh, we're going to wait to see. Disney, nice move. 106.70 out 106.95 or so there. Uh, let's wait to see what happens. We still got two thirds of this Disney trade. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen here, but uh, I'd like this long. I don't like to be long Disney in short Starbucks, but let's wait to see if that one does come through. Disney making a move to the top side right now, guys. I got to be honest, if 2800 is going to get taken, I, I kind of like, you look at the Microsoft, which is lagging right now, only up 0.6% with the ES up two and almost two and a half. You can get a break on that at about 166.40 or 50 potentially. 
uh, running into the high of the day with support down here. It just bounced off of maybe 80 cents lower than that. So that's not a bad structured idea. Uh, but the story for me is going to be Carnival here about to test 1350 right at that 2800. So at the same time, uh, this is the, this is the short that we have on. Our other shorts not going to care about the market in TLSA. So watching a break here potentially on softy through 166.50 uh, and then also working the short on Carnival. Yeah, uh, 105. I'm just looking here to see uh, where we would get out of this Disney if it doesn't go, but it'd have to be down near the 105 uh, area as well. Okay, there's that 2800 break. So uh, yeah, we're reloaded uh, to the long side with okay. Disney. So uh, let's wait to see. There's that 28, uh, 2802. Uh, here's what we're talking about with the futures. Uh, breaking to the top side there. Uh, Starbucks missing once again. So uh, that stock is going to be a problem uh, for me, but hopefully Disney can be the winner here uh, as we break above that 2800. Uh, Starbucks, yeah, about that. Uh, it breaks through 71, 75, and we get out before it accelerates itself. Wow, Starbucks, I don't know, did it just catch an upgrade or something? Starbucks ripping to the moon uh, today right now, but that's a big trade uh, heading northbound on me uh, right now. We're wrong on that one. We may try to fade it one more time, but wow, Starbucks, I've only been short today, and it's been a misstep to say the least, guys. Yeah, just quickly looking over here, we did take some shares in that Microsoft in the break. 166.49 we somehow managed to get, but also reversing long in Carnival. And we talked about this one at 1350. Uh, there was a short in front of it. This is the second time we've played a tight short in front of a key level and then broke out to the long side. The last time we were able to take on the last third of our shares there, almost a 40 cent win. This time, however, it just looks like it's going to run into a little bit of resistance. But here we go. We got 52s long. We did scalp the first little bit, at first third out the same way we did uh, at 13 even. We did the same thing here in front of 1375. I will take the second third out as well and then see if we can't run to the, to the even dollar or or just put a trail in. Either way, if we get past this 2800 and make a base, I'm going to love to hold and work into this Microsoft, or we're going to hang on to this Carnival, uh, but it's also 10 o'clock, guys. And that means not only did I get a refill on my coffee, thank you very much, Valeria, but it's time for Happening Now with Brendan. Thirty minutes uh, in the books. Uh, we'll shift over. That is not me. That is Neil. Still, guys, we'll uh, shift over to me, and we'll have a look at uh, what is happening uh, in North American markets uh, after thirty minutes in the books, guys. Thursday morning is a positive one so far. Two percent to the upside for the S and P five hundred. Uh, nice look here, right across the board. You can see top to bottom, uh, very very positive numbers here. The Dow uh, also about two percent, two point two percent. Uh, to the upside. We have the NASDAQ back in positive territory, although lagging these two a little bit. One and a half percent for uh, tech stocks so far. Uh, the Russell doing quite nicely so far. 3.75 percent to the upside for uh, small caps uh, having a nice day as well. Uh, the TSX 2.6 percent here in Toronto. Down in Brazil 1.8 percent for the uh, Bovespa. Three days in a row to the upside for them. They've really been hurt over the past couple of weeks. So nice to see uh, Brazil stocks bouncing back to the upside. Uh, energy names kind of lagging the overall market here in Toronto. I want to start with this one though. Air Canada, huge move today, guys. 14% to the upside for AC. We were talking about $18 uh, yesterday, I believe it was, as resistance. We're now above $20 and even $21 uh, consolidating at the highs of the day. All kinds of volume behind this move as well for uh, Air Canada. Energy stocks, I was mentioning, a little bit uh, lagging uh, to the downside, even with oil prices remaining strong. Meg here, 0.6%, but a uh, big flush off the open, holding above $3. This is $3, a little bit of support. We'll see what happens. Big time volume behind that move as well. Another one here, Suncor, coming back to the downside, obviously still in positive territory, but uh, off the highs, 24.10, down to about 23.60. Uh, watch this 23.30 area where we ended the day yesterday. Uh, otherwise, you want to look at uh, some of the cannabis names here in Toronto, also showing some strength today. Positive numbers right across the boards, uh, guys, so far. Back over to you. Hmm, Thank you very much, Brendan. Uh, rolling over back to that 2800. So what that what that means for me at that 1350, we do still have three quarters of our trade. What I'm going to end up doing here is take off a decent portion of it. Actually, I'm going to end up taking off the entire thing. Uh, you know what? It just doesn't feel like it wants to go, and I do have a long. It's going to be following the market as well. We've already hit CCL so very well this morning that I don't want to necessarily dig in on that name. When I'm already expressing a long trade over here in Microsoft, and we talk about that 166, uh, it was a failed break so far through 166.50. Our level down here that we're working off of was 165.50. It's about 60. Uh, either one, it will have a break clean through that 50 area, even though that bottom here is at 60. I'm going to try to reload if it holds VWAP here, but I want to see it test and hold 
retake uh, 2800 or at least test 2800 again on the ES and then jump into the shares. So not on the way down, you want to try to catch something in consolidation or on the way up. That's a trade we have over in Microsoft. TS, uh, t sorry, TLSA, I uh, keep getting that one wrong initially. 350 is the level that we're working off of, so building short in front of that one. Let's see if we can't get that to work a second time. First flush was good. Now that we're playing with house money, we'll see if we can't double up and run all the way down to three even. I would have uh, started to go long Starbucks instead of short. It's unbelievable. Uh, okay, look at AAL, guys. We're long this one, 12.75. Uh, we just cleared some out like we talked about there before 13. That's typically what, we'll all, what I'll always do anyways, get out in front of that even dollar. But now we rip to the top side, so we still got a decent position on right now for AAL. Uh, we're up to 13.11. It's a 36 cent winner. So we rain the money in, man. We just, this just goes to show you got to trade the names that are moving around and doing the real volume. 30 million shares today uh, on AAL, and wow, what a mover. We're long 12.75 all the way up. So the bulls, to say the least, are running today as AAL 16 plus percent. Obviously, Neil's been talking about CCL as well. I missed the boat on that one. Normally, uh, I'm all over CCL. I said that was one of the top stocks for me in the last little while. Should have had this 13 long. That would have been hella good. Uh, but we're going to wait to see on that one. But AAL to the top side had some resistance there at 20. Let's get out of a third of what we have left right now and then see what happens moving forward. I just see oil though. Uh, Brendan, I don't know if there was a release here or not, but uh, oil, look at this move down. 1260 pushing now down. Oil dropping there about a percent and a half uh, over the last two minutes uh, or so. Brendan, what you got? Yeah, so it's the uh, University of Michigan sentiment number just came out, guys. 72.4. This is for April. Uh, 72.4 versus 103.7 expected. I uh, just pulled this headline up here. The lowest since December of 2011 on that number, guys. You just mentioned that. I get flushed out of Microsoft. I just put in the chat, but off of that move, top here at 1750 on oxy just as that was released i jump over to this short here guys we take it at 1730 you're immediately testing 17 even here and out on that so 30 cent move very very quickly as you were saying that jump right over to the first name that comes to mind a lot of times it's going to be occidental for shorts if it's going to be long in the energy space maybe i would quickly jump over to something like an xom uh, but here's a massive massive move to the downside we're taking advantage of you get the rollover at 2800 you get that news coming in there you see that 1750 top fade into it right here at 1730 and then just take the profits on the down arrow here guys I am gonna end up putting a trailing stop in here at 17 even or oh, sorry a little bit more than that if we look at this pre-market uh, opening range top 1715 I like that for a trail otherwise let's see how far this can run yeah, look at AAL. Uh, we get some out there, like I said, at 13 or 14, uh, and then it just continues. Bang, there it is again. Uh, so we are almost out of all of our AAL. Bang, 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 uh, making the move to the top side. So hit the siren on that one. Uh, that was a really great setup, breaking this top. You had to hold it against you, uh, maybe 25 cents or so down to this 50 level. We never got stopped out uh, of this, thank God, as we ripped to the... Look at this American. Brendan, what you got, bud? PCG, guys. PG&E having a really nice day. Two days in a row, in fact. Look at yesterday. Nice trending move back to $11. We're at uh, $12.60 right now uh, for PCG. Uh, they had continued support from uh, numerous shareholders and also uh, some politicians with regards to their current restructuring plan and some of the, uh, some of the liability uh, settlements that they have recently reached. Guys. Yeah, good look there. We did. We just got trailed out of Oxy, but I'm looking at this and saying to myself, you know what, I don't know that I don't want to be uh, back into this short side trade after that little flush there. We do take it off there at 17 even for 30 cents. We get 15 on the second half. So look, it's still a very good trade very, very quickly in just a minute uh, on that news. But I think as we roll over here, it might be a, a nice little time to maybe jump back into the short and a pullback here. So I might jump in. You can just want 17.25, 17.30 area. We can use that uh, for a base of options operation and jump back into shorts in Occidental. Yeah, like, I don't know what the hell is going on with Starbucks here. I'm starting to get really pissed off uh, with this stock because uh, the market is falling down and Starbucks is not. So we're going to try one last chance here. Look, you want to break 73 Starbucks? Looks like you're going to do that anyways. So uh, straight to the top side. I can't believe our first short that we really liked uh, was down here at 70.50. Thank God we we're able to get of some, but hundreds of dollars later. Uh, we'll see what happens here with Starbucks. But uh, we are back short. Uh, this one, 72 and change. So uh, this needs to come back down 
here. I'm not even sure what's wrong with this stock. Uh, the market, as you guys can see, faded off here, 15 handles. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it is because uh, we're back down to where we were about a half hour ago. Let's see if Starbucks can't continue now it's moved down, but uh, it's a, been a march higher for this name. Brendan, give me some good news, buddy. Yeah, uh, just in front of 10 o'clock, their uh, latest thing on Starbucks, Sean, uh, they've pulled their 2020 guidance because of the coronavirus. That was at 9.58, but uh, that was the latest headline as far as Starbucks is concerned, guys. So that makes sense because that's this move right here where I got absolutely destroyed we'll on. We'll keep the slap shots going, guys. We worked back into Oxy. Just talked about how when I got trailed out, I didn't love the exit. It looked like it was still weak with the market rolling over. So we jumped back in, 17 even. One, two, three entries in front of VWAP. We take it. I uh, just took some out there for a quick scalp of 10 cents. And again, going to hang on to the rest. We were as low as 16.35 uh, here off of the open, guys. So, I, I, you know, it's not unreasonable to me that we can re retest down towards that level, but this is the second short that we're playing off of that move in oil, and it uh, looks like it's going to be almost as good as the first one, guys. So back into that oxy short. First it was at 17.30, now it's at 17 even, looking to see if we can take a similar path to the downside and profitability, guys. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it seems like we're talking about the same names here, but uh, just because these are the movers and this is what we do on the show. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, put any messages in this uh, chat uh, for us to read. I'm going to check out some Zoom. Uh, right? What? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, what a crazy day, Neil. Uh, Zoom was down to 114, where Neil and I really liked this stock. Thank God uh, I had and, a And uh, yeah, I was going to say, thank God it didn't break 114. Well, whatever. I mean, we would have been out here probably. Uh, 116 would have been a two dollar loser. But look at this one, all the way to 122. Uh, normally, when Google and uh, a lot of these places ban you from using them, uh, school districts and whatnot. You think that would be a negative sign, but uh, Zoom, uh, apparently not worried about that. 119.20 uh, might be a decent break for this one. Anyone looking at Zoom, but I did not expect uh, this move to take place uh, today. Wow, uh, what a move for Zoom, Neil. Up 2%. I know you did not expect this one. No, 100% did not. And again, this is why, look, you have to have some Crazy. levels and some discipline. Uh, we shorted this one on the 115 break and then this is where you're going to get out you just had that little pre-market level here at 116.25 that was the key level for me if you were if i was more bullish on it today and i flat out was not bullish on zoom today and if i was that'd be a place to reverse to the long side but when you're not you're only going to cover your short yeah you save yourself a bunch of money by getting out a bit earlier here uh, but sometimes if you have a bias that can work against you uh, either way we saved yourself a ton uh being disciplined on zoom uh we did work back into oxia before we throw to uh, brennan here i know it's 10 10 and we're going to get to our uh, upgrades and downgrades, but this one working back towards uh, that 17, you know, 17, 15 area. I'm probably going to be reloading on this one in front of 17, 25, 30. So let's watch that closely. But time now for upgrades and downgrades with Brendan. Hey guys, yeah, we'll have a look at a few things that have been upgraded and downgraded so far today. Really no significant moves outside of uh, big lots. We talked about that one a little bit. If you joined us at uh, nine o'clock up, 28% now, so a nice day for them. Uh, BNY Mellon also having a nice day, 3.5%. Uh, Everything else fairly muted. Starbucks, yeah, uh, back in the red now for about half a percent worth, but overall, that one has been a little bit tricky so far. HSBC to the upside, even with a downgrade today as well. So let's shift over and have a look at uh, big lots here. Uh, the news uh, after market yesterday, uh, catching a couple of uh, upgrades and uh, talking about their current quarter forecast being better than expected. This is 19 here, was a little bit of resistance in the pre-market that got taken out, came back, held as support, gave you a nice move up to 20 and a half. Look at the volume behind uh, that move as well for uh, BIG in New York as well. Yeah, there's Starbucks coming back towards that uh, 72 area now on a bit of a pullback, but uh, definite uh, relative strength. Look at the volume behind this move as well. Just compared to yesterday, this thing did basically nothing yesterday. And then all kinds of volume behind this move so far today, guys, in Starbucks. Back over to you. Yeah, the coffee there because uh, thank you to Valeria for getting us another coffee. But uh, Starbucks, look... Um, Okay, uh, it's been my biggest loser today. It's really the only stock we've lost on uh, here today, but uh, it is starting to fade back down. So I am slowly starting to piece off some of this. We are short 72.15. Uh, we've been getting some out in the 30s as it bounces. 
I still believe it or not have a target area of down here, 7150 and change. So uh, let's see if it can't make that move uh, back down. I'll see if about getting some out here, 7175 if we can. Uh, but then my target back down here, 71, I think is where its home should be. Uh, so let's wait to see if Starbucks can't come back from the dead on this one. Uh, it, scary for a while, but uh, thank God it's coming back down. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go with a fail action for me on Starbucks. And if you do rewind the tape, I did mention a big level at 7010 on Starbucks. That was what I had sort of written down. I mentioned it to you guys. Uh, we did get a flush off of the open, and you had to be really paying attention right here at 940 or 938 or so. When it turned around on a dime, you get a, two, you get a $1.50 move down and turns around at 713, right in front of that level that we're looking at. You know, you, you watch it bounce off of it and then try to take that long. I think it's going to be an interesting trade if it gets Starbucks. anywhere near uh, that 71 even here, because that was a point of consolidation. But massive, massive levels at both 7010 and 71 on Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks there, we get a little out there. Feel lucky. I get good analysis there, Neil, obviously. Uh, both Neil and I on this stock today, but uh, we just do get out just a little bit. I was thinking it was going to crash, so I didn't get out enough uh, down here, but 71.94. I talked about getting some out. I would like it to come back here. I said I'd put another order at 75, so uh, that's where we're sitting for a decent amount of our shares, but uh, Starbucks has hurt me uh, today, but uh, no matter what, I'll be down on it. I'd just like to see if we can uh, get some money back uh, on this one. You know what that's all about, Brendan. What's up, uh, Next move for Overstock. Yeah, definitely. Uh, OSTK 20% today, guys, to the upside. Talked about this one a little bit yesterday. Nice trending move up to seven. We're now at 820. So a dollar move here for OSTK so far today, guys. Okay, OSTK. Overstock. Definitely one to add to the list, guys. I just want to update you on Oxy. It does, does come back through that 125. So uh, we have the great short on the way in. We're able to take profits. It stalls out at one at 1680. That's where it terminates. We do jump back into the short uh, here at 1705. And then again at 1713 and a few more shares up at 25 right before it broke. So uh, you win a couple of times in the downside. We lose. I wanted to play that trend. I don't think I'm necessarily done uh, with this one to the south side. But we did mention uh, earlier on that for me, in the energy names, it's going to be a lot of scalping. It's not going to be holding massive positions the entire time through. We do have that meeting coming up. You should see some interesting swings in the price of oil, which is going to lead that market. I'll jump you back to TLSA. And uh, this one stopped me out through 350. However, we did like it when it retraced back through, so we jumped into some shares here at 46. Very quickly, it snapped through 50. On the way back down, we got 46. So it's testing that bottom end of the range, and now it breaks 330. So the first time doesn't work out. This time, we have less shares on, and we get the actual flush that we were looking for. It's going to give me maybe that 25 to 30 cent win that I wanted, which is that close to 10% move. However, it had to stop me out first. So we're going to go two for three on this name as well, uh, TLSA, as we try to work out of this one down in the 325 range. Okay, uh, yeah, TS. <laughs> T-L-S-A, uh, right. there, yeah. Uh, Starbucks right here, so we're still trying to break that one. Uh, we get a question here, is it possible to look at SKS? Uh, what is SKS, anyways? Uh, that's not Skechers. Uh, SKS, no, I don't know that symbol, uh, guys, but uh, okay, if you wanna look at Skechers, though, SKX, uh, I believe, on Skechers. But what I wanted to look at here was Uber really quickly, guys. Uh, Uber fading back down, great little call there. I saw that on the chat before. We faded off a dollar, so whoever uh, called that one, congratulations to you. You guys will floss one off uh, for you on that because that was a good call fading off this uber call I like it breaking back down below 2770 we have a lot of garbage here in the pre-market uh, this top was 81 that's right where we're at now the bottom of this was 50 so if we can get back into this range with the market pulling back down a little bit here uh, I don't mind uber on the short side uh, but you might have to give it a little bit of room because VWAP's back here to 2820 so I don't think this is an instant mover for you uh, but but Starbucks keeps bouncing off this 72. We are now short 72.20, so I may take some more off here. Don't know what's going on. It keeps resisting uh, this 72, but uh, right now that's my only position. And AAL, which we cashed out up here, we're holding very small position as it fades back down. Uh, just looking at fading back in here on a Carnival Cruise Line, which turns around on a dime. The top here at 1380, uh, now it's really starting to fail. We did have an initial breakout through 13 even. There's a massive level of 1220. So on the way back in, those are things that we're going to have to have a look at. It's just worth noting that we've stalled out here uh, between 2800 and 2780 on the futures. 
you really want to have that range broken before you dig too heavily into anything that isn't an individual mover. So that's what we're going to do here. Stick to the names that have been really good for us and not get too dug in and things that are going to follow the market too closely. But right now, Brennan, what do you have? Uh, SDC, guys. Matt P in the chat, they're asking about Smile Direct Club. Up 9.6% on the day, back to 475 here. A nice breakout uh, above this pre-market high, 460 on volume this morning. Remember earlier in the week, they announced that teledentistry initiative that they're starting. Some online uh, platforms being developed for SDC. So it's kind of been uh, on a positive run ever since then, guys. Uh, look at Uber, guys. I gave you this trade right here, short through 27.70. Uh, we just cashed out 62 and 61. Here it comes, bang! So that's a nice little winner there. Finally, thank you, Uber, uh, giving me that win there. We put on the shares and bye-bye. So we take an Uber down to the, and bye-bye goes Starbucks. Turn that frown upside down. So uh, we were crying a little bit, but now Starbucks making that move back down. We reloaded back up here and now we come crashing back down. So Starbucks, thank you guys. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. 500 viewers now. Welcome to the community, guys, as we keep rocking and rolling. Uh, we love that you're on board with us. Uh, keep checking back. Bigger changes, bigger things coming uh, for this show. Thank you so much for the support. Right now, we are short Uber. We're short Starbucks. And Rob, let me know if you want to do that view again, buddy. Yeah, you guys have been asking about some of the time, uh, some of the, the charts that we're looking at. And uh, I'll show primarily, it's going to be a one minute. I'll show you that look. I'll also give you a look at the daily chart I have a lot of times. And then I have a three minute sometimes I'll switch that to a five but those are gonna be the looks you're gonna get from me primarily it's a fantastic question anything like that just throw it into the chat we'll get that to you uh, right right away uh, carnival cruise line bouncing off of that 13 even one time here if we can break that range 2780 on the ES this should be a nice little breakdown to the short side guys so watch out here at BWAP on carnival I'm gonna take that short through 13 as long as we're below 2780 all right, guys, let's do a new look here that we've never done before. So, hey, whoa, what's going on, guys? This is our position board. We're going to call this up right now. You can see this is my desk, a little bit messy, but we have different screens up here. Some news information here from Refinitiv. That's old Reuters. So we have their Icon, Icon Terminal. Brendan using it as well. This is our trading screen, what we have on here. But look what we have. This is our positions right now. Starbucks is a dollar in the money, so holler at that one. Uber, five cents, and there goes AAL. We are out of that one. But what's up? I look, think I'm looking at these lights. They're a little bright. We may not do this again but good job Rob on the try let's get back to trading absolutely you guys are asking about the prices we have we'll try to get that to you real time when we say it but look at the bottom of the screen here you're gonna also see our positions roll roll through that will indicate the prices that we have as long as it's not glitching up there if there are mistakes we'll let you know what's going on I'm watching carnival as the futures roll over I'm watching oxy uh, back in that 17 15 range it looks like a good entry point for me in around that 15 to 25 uh, that was good before but right now we're ready for small cap recap with Brennan And a little bit of a uh, FOMO to go along with uh, small cap right now. I'm just watching this uh, USWS. Uh, broke a dollar and continuing. I got out in front of a dollar, but uh, great trade nevertheless. Had to take this one in the pre-market. We mentioned USWS. Uh, big contract. They secured a three-year contract for oil services uh, around the fracking industry. Uh, so gapping up enormously on that. Uh, this company had a $13 million market cap this morning when I checked. So uh, back to the downside we go from 170 all the way down to about 80 cents now almost a dollar move for this thing back to the downside give you a nice little tight consolidation in the pre-market to grab a short i was out in front of a dollar but there we go back down to 80 cents for usws micro cap world we'll call that one yeah here's that tlsa about 50 percent still uh, i just drew a line here at 380 we came up to 380 a number of times in the pre-market and tested that above that worth noting above that got to look at 4 to 420 that was kind of the next stop on the way up for tlsa but uh, we did end up holding this 380 got a nice washout down to 330 uh, it's kind of grinding down uh, 320 area now uh, probably should have held some of that one as well but tlsa usws both great opportunities on the short side in small cap world today. Back over to Neil. Thanks a lot there, Brennan. TLSA is one that I'm actually looking at as well. You guys have seen that we've been active in trading at one uh, throughout the morning. A few, three separate times we've shorted this name. Uh, technically four. It was a two-parter the first time we were shorting it. But now that it has this base here at 320, very similar to what happened at 330. It was a failed break when this happened, and then it came all the way back and retested 350. So on the premise that there's a chance it could happen again, 
Uh, I'd like to see it break 320. If it fails, I'm going to look to enter a trade on a pullback here between 35 and 40. If it does get any kind of continuation at that point, maybe we jump into it. Uh, right now, we just put on that oxy trade at 13, 6, sorry. Uh, 1716 on Occidental. We had that 25 to 30 area that we like as a bit of resistance. I also talked about Carnival, which just triggered in. It just took out 13 even to the downside. And what did I say? If we're below 12, uh, 2780 on the futures and we break on, car, on, on CCL at 13, I'm jumping into the short. So that's what we did here. We got 97 half. So short Carnival, short Oxy, both working down for us here. I mean, we also just triggered into Starbucks. Uh, crazy move to the downside there. 7110 just got taken out, guys. So lots of names breaking to the bottom right now. See, we can't get some shares out there. A little bit of Carnival Cruise I'm going to take out as it breaks through that 1290. Hang on to the rest, guys. But three shorts have come in. We're about to take out 17 even on Oxy here, guys. That just got taken out. So I will take some profits at 1695. Quick 20 cents and hang on to the rest of this as we're rolling over here in the futures very heavily. Yeah, we are, baby. And here we go. We go to the gates of hell. So screw you, Uber. We are going to put you into the gates of hell for sure as it's a banger for me right now uber hello uh we are short right here 2770 i'm gonna get in trouble if i don't move my chair uh 2770 uh we're short we just take it out that's a 33 cent winner oh yeah and about you starbucks if you guys want to rewind there it is it's not reloaded it's rewind i told you the starbucks home was down here and that's right where it is so obviously we take out a little bit too much now but we're still holding a decent number uh, of shares as we continue to move down on starbucks and this is exactly Exactly where we thought you'd belong Starbucks and now we're gonna to start to cover that one a dollar forty in the money so we make back what we lost and uh, Starbucks now for the win guys I'm looking for places to reload on Carnival here we get that 13 break we did take some out for the quick scalp it got as low as 1270 but for me it's where can I add to this short as the futures have now failed at that big 2800 level so this is what we're waiting for all morning long now you get that move I'm gonna see if we can't reload in and around 13 to VWAP on Carnival Cruise. On Oxy, however, this is why we take it all out on this. In this case, I said all of my trades in oil are going to be, in energy names, are going to be scalps. You grab that quick short on Oxy through 1715. We get out on the flush. It snaps right back into our target range. It's a wild one. Look at these whips. You want to be scalping in and out if you can. Holding is a little bit tricky when it's this whippy action. We know that meeting is coming up. We know the price of oil is going to move. So you got to trade these ones very, very carefully. I'm looking to work back into Oxy in front of 1730. That's our target out. Uh, we do have a couple guests uh, coming on board uh, very soon. So if you are a uh, wine aficionado, connoisseur, we do have the CB Wine Program and Does Great Brands Fine Wine <laughs> and Spirits coming on. What was that, Neil? Does drinking it make it count as an aficionado? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I, no, well, we'll ask. Why don't we ask that question? Uh, what, what makes that? Uh, but yeah, we have Franco uh, and Donato, I believe, coming through uh, from CB Wine Program and Great Brands Fine Wine. And uh, they're doing... Uh, Great work uh, yeah. for some charitable donations, and we're going to find out uh, about that. And look, when traders make the money, guys, Neil knows this one, we got to spend it. it. And so why not uh, find scotches, find wine, things like that. that. But what scotch. I'm not going to be spending my money on, though, is Starbucks, because uh, we've made a lot of money on Don't Starbucks in the Bolivia. past. Today, it's been a negative stock for us. But thank God we're able to cover some uh, of our Uber and our Starbucks near the bottom now, as that makes a run back to 72. But look at these covers down here 7150 let's hopefully it fades back in but uh, i am excited to hear more uh, about these wines from the cb wine program and great brands yeah i great just worked brands. a little bit back into the ccl and i know you know ben you're asking here about rcl I try to, for me, I'm going to only trade one name in the, uh, in the space. If I'm trading a cruise line, it's going to be sticking to one at a time. It's the same thing with the airlines. There's no point you know, doubling down. You already have exposure there, guys. So you did get this rollover. We did take that breakout short for a scalp. Now we're looking at a short on this little pullback. You have 1350 up at the top here. You have this entire channel from 20 to 50 that I think we can work off of. But it's a strong pullback in the futures. So you're not going to want to let it break past that level too much. As we enter 1320 to 50, I want to see if it fails this move. And if it fails, I'm jumping into more shares. I'm not going to take more shares on the way in. It has to test this level here and then fail. Once it does do that, then we're going to work back into some more shares on Carnival Cruise Lines. But if we're making a bounce, very important to see if it sustains through 2800. If it doesn't, dig into some of these shorts. 
Yep, yeah, great, uh, great analysis, obviously, there as well. I may uh, average into some more uh, Ubers now uh, and see if we can't take that. So uh, right now, it's been a pretty good day for us. Uh, it hasn't been a fireworks day, but uh, there are fireworks in the market as Jerome Powell comes and injects $2.3 trillion into the market. So uh, what that means is uh, a lot of cash being thrown around. And like we mentioned, if you did have any uh, extra cash, there's a big uh, time guest coming through here. CB Wines, we're going to talk to them about what they're doing right now uh, for everybody there in Italy, how that's going, and we're going to talk about supporting them uh, through that, and Brendan's going to have that interview uh, shortly. I did want to talk just quickly before we go. Uh, 72.30 may look to fade this on Starbucks. Uh, right now, we did make a big move all the way back up. Uh, Should have got out of everything, but we're still light. We only have about a quarter of this trade left on. I am looking to average into this. I am looking to average into Uber. Uh, again, we're out of Uber basically uh, as well, but this is a good averaging in spot as it gets back to 70. Let's see what these futures want to do. I'm going to take a few more shares short, guys. Uh, it, we, we talk about our successes. We're going to talk about our failures too because on Occidental, uh, I was talking about this 17, 25 to 30 area. Uh, we reversed long on it. I went to immediately throw a stop order in and every now and then uh, you go to put a stop order in and you put the incorrect price immediately take the position off. You see it test up through the high. Look, it was a good pivot area and it looks like it was, would have been a good long. Uh, we take it off instantly once it was like two cents in the money for us, unfortunately. Uh, so good break. We did take the top off and I'm going to stick with only scalping and not digging into Oxy or if I happen to trade XOM, it's going to be a similar story. Big move to the upside. You're going to see bigger in Occidental taking out its highs than in the futures. And this is why I'm sort of only scalping this because it's got bigger swings in the energy space today than I think the overall market because that meeting is coming up later on uh, with OPEC and the major oil producers. Uh, yeah, so we are averaged into this Uber trade right now. It looks like it wants to break to 70, 71. We will get out. Uh, you know what? Maybe that's too generous. Uh, yeah, let's not get out of our Uber. Oh, there it goes. I was going to say that's too generous if it breaks it, but uh, it just does break 70, 71, and we get out. I was going to change my stop, uh, but look at the futures now ripping to the top side here. So uh, good thing we got out uh, of that Uber trade. We may reinvestigate this uh, on once again uh, another little bit of a breakdown here on Uber up to 27.91. Uh, you can probably short this thing uh, and look at 28 uh, on the top side. But we've been talking about it. As we're going to take some more Uber shares short. We're talking about our guest of the day, uh, and it's a fine one wine type of guest. So let's throw it over to Brendan with our guest of the day. Hey guys. Yeah, very happy to uh, have the founders from CB Wine Program, Great Brands, Fine Wines and Spirits and Charlie's Burger Dinner Series uh, with us, uh, Franco Staltari and Donato Carosa. Uh, happy to join uh, uh, the guys on the program today to talk about a great cause that I, uh, guys, welcome, uh, have the pleasure to announce that uh, Trader TV Live will be donating uh, to this cause as well, $2,000 uh, to this cause as well. Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, happy Friday. How are you today? I, I keep Cheers. saying Hello. Friday. It's it's We're good, Thursday. Brendan. Cheers to you guys. Thank you very much. And uh, happy uh, happy Friday, I guess, in, in the trading world. And uh, I hope you guys can all enjoy a drink tonight or th today. We're we're starting off early. It's uh, it, it is early. I, I feel like I'm uh, a little left out here. I need a I need a glass as well. I have a, I have a coffee. So cheers, guys. Cheers. Uh, to, cheers uh, to you. Yeah, cheers on this uh, Thursday to you. Uh, let's let's jump right into things here. Obviously, uh, let's get a little bit of a backstory first off. Tell us about uh, CB Wine Program and the dinner series and uh, how that got started. Absolutely. So um, we started the dinner series uh, ten, actually eleven years ago, two thousand and nine. Uh, we bring in some of the top chefs in the world from Michelin star restaurants, Relais Chateau properties, world's 50 best restaurants, bring in the entire team to Toronto, let them execute any menu they want. And we've always paired it with terrific wines uh, that we've imported um, in partnership with great brands. Uh, Donato is my partner in, uh, and he's been a bar, our, we've been partners for 10 years. Uh, great brands has, has been around for over 20 years importing uh, some of the top wines from uh, uh, around Italy and around the world. Uh, seven years ago, we started a subscription wine business called the CB Wine Program, which is essentially a monthly wine delivery service to your door or to your office of a select um, uh, producer every month that puts together a custom case of wine for our members. Obviously, all of the uh, notes about the producer and the wines comes with the package. We feature two different restaurants every month where our members are able to bring the wines and not pay corkage. That's unfortunately on hold right now in terms of the restaurant side of it. 
uh, but we will resume as soon as they open. Um, and, um, and it's a very fun program. We have a, a few tiers of our wine subscription business. We have a, a premium tier as well. Um, but uh, that's kind of uh, the overall um, description of what Charlie's Burgers is and what the CB Wine program is. Uh, Great Brands, as I mentioned, has been importing wines for over 20 years uh, from some of the top producers. Uh, and Donato and I, as I said, have been partners uh, uh, throughout the, the, the course of uh, the whole Charlie's Burgers and CB Wine program uh, adventure. We've decided uh, in, in ver last week and just launched this, all of our um, case sales for home delivery moving forward, we're gonna donate 100% of the profits uh, to the uh, Sunnybrook COVID-19 initiative to try to help and to try to do our part. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of the program right now. So uh, if anyone's interested in buying wine, CB, wineprogram.com come on the website buy some wine help support us it's a good cause and you you get to drink while you do it so cheers Brandon. yeah that's uh i mean fantastic news guys i wanted to give you the uh the opportunity to announce that in fact but just uh, in case anybody missed it uh they're they're donating a hundred percent of their profits from their home delivery wine case service uh to the covid 19 research uh, going on at sunnybrook hospital here in toronto so maybe neil and sean or we can yeah there we go we can get some fun fireworks for uh, that announcement. That's, uh, that's fantastic, guys. Uh, I mean, amazing stuff. I want to jump into uh, some of the wines here that are being offered. So talk to us a little bit about uh, maybe on a, on a month to month basis. Obviously, you know, you mentioned that uh, they're going to be different each time. But tell us about, you know, where, you know, some of the regions they're coming from, some of the wines that uh, maybe people can expect to uh, receive. Donato, you want to take this one? Well, we import uh, great brands has imported wines uh, for over uh, 20 years, as Franco mentioned, uh, uh, world class wines and uh, from all over the world, uh, primarily old world wines being um, Italy and uh, France has, uh, has been a um, has been a hot uh, has been a hot priority for us as of late, um, as well as our beloved Italy, uh, especially during this uh, time and giving them as much support as possible. Uh, we've had uh, we had one story with uh, our producer in the Piedmont region, and uh, during this time, they sent us a nice email. It's a world-class producer uh, saying they were working on our only order. The only order, the only thing they had to do during this crisis was to package our order, which was, uh, we were proud to see that. Um, yes, and our, our wines, uh, we work with wines from California, from Spain. Uh, from a lot of eclectic different regions, uh, we focus on subzones and uh, very territorial, indigenous, and uh, that's basically our our niche has always been bringing a quality experience and an at home experience, uh, servicing the top restaurants in our in Ontario as well as our beloved partner, the the LCBO, which we care very much for and has uh, and has provided us, us with the opportunity to be able to serve Canadians. Um, you know, firstly, we want to, uh, you know, thank all of our, uh, all of our client, our customers, our clients, and we want to thank our beautiful country and our province. Uh, we care very much for Toronto. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, hence why we've been compelled to, uh, to do this. We're fortunate to be able to serve our city and uh, especially during this crisis as an essential. Uh, but it's very valuable to us to do a meaningful experience. We're compelled um, to help as much as we can. We want to thank all the first responders and all the healthcare professionals. Um, but most importantly, we want to be here and do our part. We believe our city needs our help. The government needs our help. We don't have all the answers. We don't want to pretend to have all the answers. Uh, but we want to show our love and we want to do our part and we're looking to do more. Uh, this is only the beginning. We want to really, really try uh, to bring that experience in a quality way to our at-home consumers, uh, but in a meaningful way together, uh, we're going to stay strong and we're really going to do this fight. And, um, and we're looking to raise a significant amount of money as much as we possibly can and as much support we can have from everyone in the public um, we're really serious about this effort and this initiative is, uh, is extremely important to our hearts and uh, to our city and uh, to our program um, and, 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 and helping our producers uh, who need the help right now uh, when the chips are down, this is where you know, everyone knows who their friends are. Um, we're a community player. 
Uh, we look at this as a community and our village is burning. I, I picture this as being in a village in a mountain. Uh, we all come out with buckets of water to help. And, and I think this is the effort. We hope to inspire people and business alike. Um, we're here just doing our part in the best way we possibly can um, in a quality way. And, and I think and, it's important, and, yeah, sorry, I, I think it's important to, to kind of emphasize that uh, that point, guys, that uh, not only are, are you helping with, you know, contributing to the research aspect of things, uh, you know, with donating uh, to Sunnybrook Health uh, initiatives when it comes to COVID-19 research, but also helping out, uh, you know, the suppliers and the, the growers and the producers uh, as you mentioned, you know, that was their only order that they were filling. That's right. And we have to thank Canada and we have to thank Ontario. You know, we have an amazing government that uh, they've done a lot to kind of preserve where we are right now relative to the global aspect of things. And taking things really serious is, is a big deal. And uh, we are fortunate. I mean, despite kind of all some of the negatives in the economy and everything else, we're sensitive to everyone and everything. And hence why. Um, you know, we want to give all of our profits uh, uh, away to the cost specifically for COVID and all the programs surrounding however the money is spent for whether it's isolation or medical vaccines or whatever, we'll leave that to the professionals. Uh, but we want to be here with our heart and our love and, uh, and do everything we possibly can. And Canada being, uh, being as, 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 as amazing as our country is, 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 is helping people and helping suppliers. And in terms to uh, Donato's point about kind of uh, having a village or taking a village to kind of, you know, try to solve a problem or try to help and, and also, uh, you know, when the chips are down, you see who your friends are. Uh, we also want to thank a couple of a uh, couple of other donors that are going to match the first ten thousand uh, dollars uh, raised by us. Uh, the Moise and Marissa Kassam Foundation have pledged ten thousand um, dollars in addition to the first ten thousand dollars we donate. Our friends at the Candle uh, Artistique at uh, Avenue Road in Davenport also um, pledged to donate ten thousand dollars for our first uh, ten thousand dollar pledge plus the two thousand dollars that uh, you've just donated so we're gonna we're gonna donate thirty two thousand dollars really really quickly and, and that you know we're, we're, we're expecting that to be our first donation we want to keep ramping it up and keep going so anything anyone out there as well if, if, if you can support and and buy some wines and and uh, you know ha have fun while you're while you're supporting that'll help everyone let's just uh, give a little bit of a recap guys as far as uh, what uh, people can expect so it's a monthly program or quarterly uh, uh, depending on how they how they want to do it uh, tell us you know how many wines you get per month how many sure. wines you get per quarter all the details once again sure 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 now to be clear the our monthly wine program uh, uh, it, 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 we're donating all the the profits from our case sales so that's uh, all of all of our cases of wine that comes in six packs and 12 packs that we deliver directly to people's homes um, and those range from northern Italy Piedmont all the way down to Sicily from France from the Champagne region all the way to Bordeaux uh, we have some Spanish producers uh, from the from um, uh, the Priorat area we have some Portuguese producers we have some California producers um, so basically all of the case sales from these top producers globally um, will we'll be donating uh, all the profits to to Sunnybrook that's, uh, I mean, an amazing initiative, obviously, uh, just in itself. Uh, but as we mentioned before, you know, obviously helping out some of the growers and producers on their end as well, who are also uh, obviously affected with this uh, this crazy time that everyone, you know, globally is going through right now. Uh, you want to touch on the, uh, I, I, you mentioned it briefly there, but the Moez and Marissa Kassam Foundation. Uh, I give us, uh, you know, some of the details as far as they are concerned and how they got involved. So, uh, um, being uh, um, big in, in the food and wine community, uh, the Moez and Mercer uh, uh, Kassam Foundation, when they when they heard uh, of the initiative, immediately kind of said, "How can we help?" And proposed, "Hey, listen, we'll we'll pledge the first ten thousand you raise, we'll match it." Um, after which, um, uh, Candle Artistique, which is at Davenport and Avenue Road, uh, did the exact same thing, literally with a few days of uh, the Mar Moez and Marissa uh, Moez, sorry, the Moez and Marissa Kassam Foundation. Um, and again, going back to the Kassams, you know, having a real affinity and passion for food and wine, I think this was kind of right up their alley in terms of donations. And uh, uh, they love uh, they love wine, so it kind of uh, it, it, it worked uh, hand in hand. 
Franco uh, Staltari and Donato Carosa. Uh, guys, uh, it's been a pleasure. Give everyone the website maybe. Uh, if anybody wants more information, where can they find it? Absolutely. So uh, the website is cbwineprogram.com. You can uh, find all the information there. You have case sales. You can join the wine club. Um, and you have our contact information there. Email us directly through the website, which is cbwineprogram.com. We'll get back to you the same day. And whatever you need, we're here. We deliver uh, directly to people, obviously, safely with a, a, a very kind of uh, safe distance in terms of our delivery. So you don't have to leave home and you don't have to line up for, uh, for wine anymore. Fantastic. And uh, if for anyone who missed it, 100% of the profits from the uh, home uh, wine case delivery going to Sunnybrook COVID-19 research. Uh, guys, best of luck. Uh, I mean, I hope we can have you back on the show and give us an update maybe in a couple of weeks. Absolutely, Absolutely happy. It would be our pleasure and our honor. Thank you for uh, Trader TV for having us. It means the world to us and our city. There yeah, we go. thank you. And, and if we can come down to the studio next time, we'll bring wine. It'll be a lot more fun. Even better. Yeah, that is that is uh, an idea I think we can all kind of get behind here as well. Uh, guys, a pleasure. Best of luck and uh, stay safe, obviously. All right. Thank you, guys. Cheers, Cheers to you guys. Thank you. Cheers. There you go, guys. Uh, the guys from uh, CB Wine Program. Go check out the website if you you know want any more information or want to get involved. Again, they're donating 100% of the profits uh, from their home delivery wine case sales uh, to the COVID-19 research initiative going on at Sunnybrook uh, here in Toronto right now. Uh, let's go back to the guys. Yeah, what, a, uh, what a fantastic interview, and I know uh, Neil and I have been part of uh, some wine uh, case deliveries in the past, <laughs> and uh, with that kind of great news and uh, donations, charitable heart there, thank you so much to CB Wines, and uh, I think if you guys can support them, fantastic. Check it out. Obviously strong here in Canada, so we raised the Canadian flag for that one, and uh, yeah, COVID research, anything they can do, uh, anything you guys can do as well. We had Sean Shirzadi from Food Bank yesterday, Flemington Food Bank uh, as well, and then these guys today. And it's been an absolutely fantastic uh, week for guests and more to come with exactly. P.G. Watkins later on as well, Neil. You talk about giving away 100% and it's one of those things that like, you know, you're finding out through this entire this entire crisis, pandemic, uh, just incredible actions by a lot of people, whether it's, you know, uh, making donations like we're trying to do or like you just saw there or just your frontline workers. And you just got to find ways to get back. And we're, like I keep saying almost every single day, Sean, we're really lucky to be able to continue to do what we love, which is trade the markets. And not everybody is in that position. They're having hardships, whatever it might be. We're here. We're able to do our passion and, and share it with you guys. And we're going to be doing it as long as we possibly can every single day will be here 9 to 12 uh, Eastern time. I'm going to jump back over into, uh, and I just took off uh, the biggest sucker trade all morning, guys. I, I was looking at Costco here and wanting to, wanted to play this move for a break uh, into 2800. Now, ideally, I wanted to find something that was weak that had breakout potential through this 300 area with a nice tight stop. But as we fail to get back up to that futures level, we take it off for flat. And uh, right after that happens, without any move in the futures, it pops above VWAP and looks like it might want to run. So Costco, I think you got a nice little double bottom here at 298. We'll see if we can't find a way to revisit it, but sometimes you're looking at the futures and what's happening in the overall market a little bit too much and ignoring your setup, which told me that it was a long position there. We take it off flat like a chump, and now, now it would have been a nice little win for the first half, and you could have ran the second half into that 303 range. That was consolidation earlier on. Uh, I did want to give this opportunity to educate a little bit here, uh, if we can. Um, and I know it's going to be a little hard uh, to see this on the chart here. Uh, but what we have here is whenever we're mentioning going long, it's actually buy, right? And so when we talk about that, you see the bottom there, we'll have a little explanation. These up arrows, uh, we have it as green. Okay, I have them as blue on here. Uh, is there green on your screen, Neil, or yeah, blue? Yeah, uh, I mean, I have mine as green. Okay, uh, yeah, so yeah. I think just when I switched over here. But these arrows up, so that means we've bought shares and we own the shares. When we sell them, right, we have a sell arrow on here as well. Uh, that sell arrow, if we go to a stock here uh, like Apple, let me see if I can go back to Apple here quickly where I know I have uh, some sales on Apple today. This stock here, where is it? Here we go. Throw it up. Yeah, here. Uh, it's going to be hard to see because of the Zoom situation here. But uh, these red are sells. So the blue means we've bought and the red means we have sold those shares. So those are simple sell arrows, right? So the sell arrow means we've long, we own the stock, and now we've sold this. So I bought down here on this blue arrow, which will have to change to green. Not sure how that went to blue. Uh, and then we go up here. Red would be the sell. Now let's explain it back here. SBUX. We'll go back to Starbucks uh, quickly. All of these 
purple arrows right here, right here. Anything that's purple with an arrow pointing down, this is where I was getting owned. Those are short sells. So what a short sell means is that we've borrowed the shares from our broker and in an attempt to sell them, we sell them at the current market price and buy them back lower. So that's how you make money shorting a stock. So like up here, I've sold them to the market here at 72.43 and bought them back at 71.90. So this is a 72.43 down to 71.90. So that's a 50 cent win because this arrow pointing down guys means we've short sold the stock. So short sold the stock and again, I'll put the arrow up again. There we go, the short sell, what that means is did it go up there? It goes, yeah, short selling the stock to the downside now uh, and buying it back. So that's a little bit of explanation there. I hope that makes sense. I am going to change my arrows, though, Neil, to green. Not sure when they switched to blue because uh, they were green before. Yeah, I have, a, I have a weird feeling that like it might be defaulted to that. Uh, I, I do want to jump back over here to continue to look at Carnival. I know some of you guys have been looking at Royal, uh, RCL. I've been watching CCL and uh, trading this one rather heavily uh, this morning. And as we breach, uh, break back towards 2800 and you get that little test that's happening in the futures you're gonna see consolidation in some of these names and provide you with a bit of an opportunity despite the fact that we're getting close to lunchtime and for carnival it's gonna be right here a breakdown 330 which I'm staring at the face right now uh, with 1350 is a bit of a stop you fail at this 2800 and you get another one of those quick legs down so that's what I'm gonna work with here if we break 1330 I'm jumping back into shorts in this name see if we can't run that one back into at least 13 even or that dip down to 1270 we had before for if we fail a second time at 2800, I expect a deeper move, even if it's going to be lunchtime. So you want to have some shorts on board if it happens. Uh, yeah, 20, uh, just looking to see, I'm going to get uh, some more shares here on uh, whatever this stock is here, Uber. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We are going short now, Uber. That's our only two positions. Why don't we throw up our position board now? Uh, what camera do you want to do, Rob? You want to try that look again? No, let's do this one. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, so we'll do this camera two here. These are the only two positions that I have on right now, guys. It's Starbucks short at 72.24. That's 25 cents in the money. We're hoping that that gets back down to 71.50. That should be a home run. Uh, and our Uber position right now is seven cents in the money looking to build more off that 28. That's what we're talking about right now as this market continues uh, to bounce around off, Neil, of 2,800. I mean, it just, it doesn't seem to want to ping off of that right now. Uh, we dropped down as low as 2,795 right now. Uh, that was a nice little run off of 2,800. Uh, that's where we made most of our money down there, 30 handles. Uh, but right now, Uber and Starbucks both back into the money for me uh, on what a busy day. I've already taken one Advil. I feel like I have a little bit of a headache. Uh -oh. Oh. talking a lot here today. Don't, you don't want anything taken away from these markets here, Sean. And we just I just talked about Carnival here on that 1330 breakdown as we sort of ran away from 2800. Yet again, I grabbed some shorts there at 30 broke. Uh, you can see a couple entry points here. We did get one at 29. Uh, we got another one here at 27. So our average price is actually mostly 29s that we got. But uh, here's the first out right at VWAP. So you scalp a quarter of this out for the quick 10 cent win. Like I said, there's a decent chance we can run to 13 even here if we do continue this move. Otherwise, you're looking to see on a continuation down through that 2780, down through that 2770 that we failed at last time. Ideally, you do want to see if you can hold for 1270 to 1290 type target ultimately. So we have half out now for a nice little 10, 12 cent scalp. Now we're going to run the rest of that bottom if we can get it. Uh, but it's also time for Money Talks with Brennan Wick. Hey guys, yeah, morning uh, flying by here, 10 to 11 already. Let's uh, have a look at some uh, currency pairs as we head towards 11 o'clock. Uh, anything basically versus the U.S. dollar going to be strong today? U.S. dollar weakness after that weekly jobless claims number out this morning at 8.30 came in a little bit bigger than expected. So all these ones at the top here are going to be higher today, including the euro, 0.6%. Uh, back to 109 and change. We were talking about 108 yesterday, so nice move for the euro back to 109 and change the CAD as well. 71 0.75. Uh, yesterday we were back to 70.75, so uh, full penny there, about half a percent uh, for the CAD. Back to the upside, uh, we have the British pound back in positive territory as well, uh, 124 and a half. Uh, the last update on uh, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson suggesting that uh, things were progressing, he was doing well, sitting up in bed, talking to some of the uh, medical staff. So uh, British pound back to the upside. On that news, we have the Japanese yen, Swiss franc, both lower on the day, 
Australia and New Zealand. Third day in a row here. Uh, we got back above uh, 60 cents two days ago. Now 63 for the Aussie. 1.25 in positive territory. Uh, New Zealand back above 60 now as well. Uh, that was down to 57 cents last week. So a nice move back uh, to the upside there uh, for the New Zealand dollar. Cryptocurrency is not really doing a lot. 73 and change or 7300 and change for Bitcoin. Ethereum basically unchanged at 171. That's a look at some currency pairs today. Back over to Sean. Yeah, back over to me and back over to Starbucks because Starbucks right now. Uh, oh, I like that animation. I'm going to hit that animation again. You guys like this? Uh, put it in the chat. Where did, oh, God, I lost it. Where's my, there it is right there. Starbucks animation right here. Uh, okay, I changed my uh, ticks to green. So how does that look? I think that looks a little bit better. Uh, you can see all of the trades here. This neon green, uh, I don't know. Uh, Neil and I will have to converse and see uh, if we have them matching up here. But Starbucks now, uh, how do you like those uh, neon? <laughs> dark green here yeah but i have what? the dark green on the candles though yeah we'll figure we'll figure it out you know, green buy i think we I can all agree that that's gonna work guys but uh i just you know i sat back down here took a very quick little bathroom break and uh missed the reload opportunity on carnival there he's at not reloading uh that was my price but i did just manage to get some shares uh when i sat down there at 29 so you know i'm continuing to work this range uh, i think you can maybe be an adder if you want to be very very aggressive in front of 1350 this is a play on the on the potential that we've made a bit of a top here in the market and just finding something I can pull back. We're up 11% on Carnival. You've seen some massive runs on this. The shorts have been good for me, uh, despite the fact that our best trade was along, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but I'm gonna be scalping this one in front of that 1330 and VWAP, trying to sustain this move if we can uh, to 13 even and lower. But again, at this time of day, with us rubbing on that 2800, failing lower this time, uh, you wanna be positioned uh, for the short rollover, have some names you like. I've got Carnival here, but where are you gonna go long? If we break 2800 and make a bit of a move to the upside, you've got to have some names you're confident in. I was looking over at Costco earlier before bungling that trade. That's probably gonna be a place that I think there could be a nice recovery in Costco. It's down 2%. If the market really starts to get going, it's a, it's a strong company, good name. We both like this one here. Uh, it's probably gonna end up being a 301 break if we take 2800. Otherwise, if it can give you 298 and, it's, and we're down here and you test that top, that's even better. So a couple of things to look at, a double bottom on Costco you can work off of or break out of 301 in case we make a new high on the futures. Yep, good uh, good look. I love uh, the Costco look for sure. Uh, we just want to talk about it because uh, it is now raining in the money. So we'll throw out uh, some confetti and then drop the money because uh, Starbucks right now, you can see with my uh, new bright neon green ticks uh, that we go short up here, 72.50. I love playing those 50 cent levels. Uh, we go short and now we execute out right there at 90. Look, I would love to, love to uh, hold this Starbucks a little bit longer but I'll just draw a line right here. This seems to be like the line in the sand back and forth here. Uh, oh, I didn't even know I could do a vertical line. Okay, uh, there we go. But uh, you can see right here, guys, uh, it's been bouncing off to 71.70. So instead of waiting for the ultimate bottom, I put a bid at 90 and we capture that 60 cents. So that's a win. If we can break down below 71.69 right here, forget about this. I see some questions on Facebook chat uh, from Valeria. These are not moving averages, guys. These are This is a VWAP. So uh, I'm looking at a one minute VWAP. Check our YouTube channel. We do have some uh, VWAP explanations on there, but uh, just volume weighted average price. So VWAP, maybe Valeria, uh, you could put that in the chat, but uh, that's what this line is. I would love for Starbucks to get back down here. It seems like it wants to defend the 7170 area. So I'll dump my shares. Hey, look, a 50 cent win at 11 o'clock is something that we should probably take, guys. Uh, just alert to big lots here, guys. Uh, we talked about this off the open. It's still up 28%, but look at the failure uh, to break the... You take an opening range break here at about 20, 30 or so. It gets about 40 pennies. Now it's really starting to come off. And look, look at this pullback. This is without the futures pulling back at all. So you have a name which is extended a little bit. And you have it rubbing off this 20 even mark a couple of times. When that breaks, you're going to count me short. You can play this entire range, whether it's 20, uh, 20 even to 20, 50 or 20, 30. Risk 30 to 50 cents. Uh, let it break VWAP. Once it gets past there, you have potential to get down into the 1920 uh, to 1940 range. So uh, now looking at big lots, it's one that I sort of missed throughout the morning, despite the fact that it was a big time gapper. And we're now looking at that 20 even level around here at 11 o'clock to see if we can't get a short break on big lots. We're gonna work back into our carnival. 
We again took some shares off and we'll go with, I don't know, drop the money because we're just cycling in and out on Carnival Cruise. We're getting out in front of VWAP. We're taking it when it gets into our target range here at 1330. We'll continue to do that. As it bounces off VWAP, you might want to get yourself a better price. Let it travel into the 40s maybe each time. You want to see what happens on that 2800 test. Whether that goes or whether 40 or 50 goes, both those are solid reasons to get out of this trade. Yeah, thanks, Max, uh, for that uh, comment there about the green. Uh, I like it better uh, as well. And thank you to uh, Philippe. You guys are awesome. Well, you're awesome uh, for watching us there. Big love fest here. Uh, okay, uh, one name I did want to look at here was Twitter. It looks like we could break back above this 2810 level. Uh, it's bounced up here a couple times. The ultimate high here is 2813. Uh, not ult I mean, the ultimate high is up here at 29. But I think we run back there, man. So let's wait to see here if Twitter wants to take out 2810. I'll go long and then use this base down here, 278. 80 or so as uh, Twitter looking to take out right now uh, 2810 uh, if the futures go back up this should be a great one Twitter uh, from the bottom if you look at a daily chart uh, has been okay it's not as super aggressive as some of the other names uh, but today and yesterday big moves up on Twitter so uh, let's see what we can do I don't know if we retake this but 29 seems like a pretty solid top so let's play a 2810 long as I may sneeze soon uh, here but uh, 28 10. Oh, there it goes. It does break. Let's get long Twitter right now, guys. Yeah, let's not have his knees on camera there, but let's jump over to Macy's and why not? Macy's is up 14% on the session. Uh, it, obviously, you know, the retail space has been getting beaten up uh, throughout, the, throughout the year, but you are making a nice little bounce in Macy's. If we jump over uh, to the daily chart, you can sort of see what we're start running into right now. And you see this level here, that's 7, 720 or so. You know, one, two, three times on the way down, a couple of times on the way back up uh, from that four ish bottom it's run into this and run away and again today you're getting it uh, you're gonna run away from that 720 if we roll over here in the futures which again I'm not saying it has to happen but at this point you'll test it test it test it. we have a couple of ideas to the long I want to be able to sit in some shorts if we can in front I'm looking at this seven even area you're working to something on Macy's if we get a flush this is one that should come back in nicely for us I will also go again with a bit of a cheer for Carnival. We cycle in and out again. We just keep taking 10 cents at a time while maintaining our core position around that 13.30. And so we're going to continue to do that while now looking at Macy's as well in front of that 7 even. You know what? I'm not going to get uh, super crazy here on Uber. Uh, oh, sorry. Uber. Uh, I'm short Uber right now, uh, which is working great. But uh, my long here on Twitter breaks through 2810. Uh, our average price is 12 uh, now. So it's uh, it's seven pennies out. So we're not going to cry uh, over that. But uh, right now it is failing at that 28. 10 spot. Uh, we're going to wait to see. Normally I get out of these at 28. I'll probably thin that out here uh, if we do break through 28 and then use this 2780 as an ultimate bottom. But uh, this market could fall. Uh, so we don't want to be, I know Neil's talked about this a little bit. Don't let your winning trades turn into losing trades here. So uh, Uber now bouncing, Uber, I keep saying Uber, Twitter now bouncing back to the upside. But we are ready uh, to cover some European indexes here with Valeria at the big screen. So let's throw it, guys. Hey guys, welcome to the European update. Well, Europe is back to positive territory today after closing negative on Wednesday. Britain is up 2.75%. Germany is up 2.11%. France is up 1.21%. And Spain is up 1.91%. Uh, uh, now some quick news from Europe. Daimler, a parent company of Mercedes-Benz, announced that it's going to restart its German factories starting on April the 20th. Uh, Lufthansa is losing 1 million euro per hour as traveling is paralyzed due to coronavirus outbreak. Airbus announced that it's going to cut third of uh, its uh, aircraft's production due to coronavirus. That's all for now and I'll keep you updated. Back to Brandon.
Hey guys, yeah, let's uh, jump into trade of the day. It's 11 o'clock. This is the segment where we go back over one of the trades that uh, either Neil or Sean took at the open this morning and kind of discuss uh, some of the news that was related to the company, uh, how we approach the stock, some of the levels that we were looking at as far as uh, execution went. There was a whole bunch of things moving around in the pre-market this morning. A uh, number of names that we covered uh, gave you lots of opportunity. So uh, we're going to uh, jump over to the screen and uh, here's Neil. Thank you very much, Brennan. And the name that has been all over our radar lately, both Sean and I looking at Carnival Cruise very, very heavily. It's just been so volatile the entire space uh, that almost daily it's giving you opportunity. And uh, one of the things that I talked about here in the chat is, look, there's Royal Caribbean, there's Carnival, there's lots of other names. I mean, you, you can pick one if you want. I like to make sure I stick to that one instead of jumping around and trading uh, too many names individually. You can express your trade in the entire space in the one that you get the best read on. And for me, it's been Carnival Cruise Line. I came in and immediately was looking at a 13 even area. It was a very strong name. The market got that big bounce uh, from, from the Fed at 8.30 on the heels of that jobs, that, that, uh, that, uh, jobs claim, jobless claims number. And I was thinking initially, look, we tested at the open, that 13 even, and when I see it test a level and then immediately fail, my first thought's gonna be to short. You get a level break, you get a failure. Okay, well, let's see what happens. I didn't get the initial short here, but let's see what happens when it retested. If it fails, you could get a deeper flush than before, looking for 50 cents worth of upside. However, bullish name, been getting squeezed to the upside, even though I'm going to do a small short in front of it, this is a reverse long play for me. I wanted the break at 13. It doesn't mean I can't do a scalp short in front of it, but it's all about the breakout play. That's what's been working on Carnival. This is what we try to do. Let's jump into the first clip and see how it all worked out. In price. Uh, so for me, it gives you an opportunity here on 15 million in volume to risk, you know, five, 10 pennies on a 13 even break and short in front of it. Watch out, the futures are coming hard. So it's not going to be a massive position size, but I like taking this crack and then 13 can be almost a reversal long for you guys. So that's the idea over here in Carnival. Going to see if we can't work this trade, but it's running up to it very, very closely here, guys. So right away, uh, we're going to test this level. Yep. Yeah, you see that nice little trend in the pre-market to the upside, and it's one of those things. You, you have to have this structure on your trade. If you're going to be taking this little short in front of that 13 even, a couple of things you work with here. You can either have it so tight to 13 that the gross amount of pennies that you're losing is small, or you can have less shares shorting in front of 13 than you're going to reverse long, or you can do both. Either way, that'll ensure that you're putting on less risk on the position you don't love as much, which could win still, then you are on the long, which you think is going to be a fantastic breakout opportunity, Brendan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a nice move off of the open, definitely. I mean, we talked about the entire group kind of moving high. CCL Carnival Cruise position, the last third here. Uh, you can see we reverse long. We did get some out, uh, stair stepping on the way up. You take the, the short, you risk 10 cents, you then make it right back, and then 20 on the second third. I'm going to go with a basically break even stop. We'll give it to about 12.95 or so, just to allow it to test that 13 even area. Otherwise, let's see if we can't make a run in the market here at the top of 2800 and then see how far Carnival can go. It's up 10%. We've seen bigger moves than that, Sean. Yeah, you know, we talked about taking some off for profit here. The first step is going to be at that fail point initially. And, you know, you scalp out that first little bit. That actually pays for your short. Then you're extending the second half for 20 cents. And what, after that, now you're looking for the last third. And for me, this is how I like to trade these. I like to play both ends of it, the hold and the scalp. It's not that I had a target in mind. I just wanted to see how far it can go. And if it's going to roll over at a particular price level, initially I was thinking of a trailing stop around break even. But once it failed at this top here, it was a massive, massive seller at 1350. You know, I just saw a massive 1350 seller. 2800 is a big level on the ES. We're rubbing up on that and failing at that price. You put those two things together, and as it bounces on the way back in, I'm just taking the trade off at that point. I think maybe you'll have some opportunities to reload, and that's what my line of thinking is. So why not just take the entire thing out for the 40 cent win here on the 13 break, and then look for another re-entry point. You know, at that point, I think there's so much liquidity, so much volume, Brendan, that you're going to get multiple trade opportunities in Carnival. There's no need to get greedy. 
thinking that the initial move is going to sustain all the way through, say, 14 even. Yeah, let's talk about that uh, re-entry you mentioned there. Uh, what is it exactly, I mean, on the pullback, once you get a big run to the upside off of the open, on the pullback, what is it exactly you're looking for to kind of get you back in the uh, mindset of, okay, we might be reversing back to the upside here? It's basically going to be this level we took our initial shares off, and that was about that 13.10. The first 13 break off of the open failed at that price. The second one, that was a nice little pullback as well. So there was some liquidity around there. So as we pull back in, my first thought is, let's defend that. If I get any kind of a turn, and this is what happened, we came all the way down, failed to get even to that 13.10 area. So as it bounced, not getting to 13.10, I just quickly snap in uh, to the long position. The only mistake I make here uh, is you know, basically taking it off a little bit too early. I had some orders that were resting out, uh, and I allowed them to just sort of get picked up. Uh, maybe not the best idea there sometimes, Brendan, but uh, that was what my line of thinking was when we got that long. It's just that failure point at 13.10, and once it happens, I want to snap in. And a little bit of weakness, obviously, coming into uh, the stock uh, in a few moments here. Let's go to the next clip. It goes Carnival again, guys, up to 13.50, and I was just about to say it was up 10%. Now we're up 12%. You know, we talked about this even those quarters. We just took out 13.50. Now it's time to slide my stop order. Forget about 12.95. Now that we're along 13.01 and we're deep in the money, you're looking at this sort of level here, maybe 13.10. I wouldn't be crazy. It wouldn't be crazy to go 13.25. So you know, I'm going to go with a stop at the 13.25. The higher mark, the long is in, guys, and it's working like gangbusters here. Uh, big time moving Carnival Cruise. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's going to be the end of it, that trade, but it's not the end of the story for me. We end up reversing short in front of that 1350 again uh, when it holds. We then get a break of that price, so you take the initial short, lose, reverse long win. Load back in, win on that long, go back into the short. We're getting heavy trading in here, guys, and we're going to reverse again at 1350. This one almost immediately looks entirely too weak for me. The problem here is if you're going to take breaks at this price level, when the overall market is at a big resistance point, I feel like you have to be very, very disciplined so we get very quickly in and out, not making anything until we get the absolute flush back down. And that's when we start really digging back into position on Carnival. As you can see, we've been working this short off of 1330 very aggressively, using VWAP as a bit of an out here, looking for that continuation flush. If the futures can't get pushed to this level, if Carnival wants to hold the lower high here, this is just a, a short that can be a home run, I think, uh, for the rest of the day. And what was it that kind of identified that, uh, you know, we, we broke obviously lower, didn't put in the higher high, and then broke to the downside? What is it that kind of, you know, made you flip uh, gears, I guess, and flip directions and want to short this thing throughout the rest of the morning? I mean, to be perfectly honest, you're going to see a, a, a big volume spike in here. Like when this failed through this point, it wasn't necessarily when we started coming back into VWAP. It's when we continued to roll over on big volume. You know, there was a massive snap short that we were able to take a quick scalp off of. That's when the stock really started to get very, very weak, despite the fact that like, we're still up 10% here on the day, and it's been up all session long, and it's been up the last few days as well. You know, you get that market top, you get big time sell volume start to come into it. We decide that, hey, the big home run at this point is going to be the short trade, despite being a great long off the open, Brennan. Yeah, there you go. Lots of opportunities, both directions for CCL. The entire group kind of moving, uh, you know, with one another. As I mentioned, no real significant news on any of them today, but uh, CCL initially showing a little more strength than the rest. Uh, moving to the upside, but Carnival, your trade of the day for Thursday. Let's go back to the guys. All right, good, uh, good look there, Neil. Yeah, I, I didn't trade Carnival today. It's been one of, uh, like Neil mentioned uh, there, we have both been looking at these stocks basically the last month. I mean, they've been fantastic uh, to trade on the way down and uh, now apparently on the way up uh, for these stocks. But look at Twitter, guys. Uh, we are buying by all these greens. Remember, all these buys and all the reds are sells. So, uh, yeah, we've been buying at the top 28 uh, I don't know, 28.12 was our average price at one point. Uh, then we picked some more down here in the 80s, and now we're dumping them at 06. So our average price right now is 97 uh, on Twitter, and uh, we hope that this one uh, continues to go upside for us here. Twitter is the name of that game. Uh, Starbucks, what I was putting there in the chat uh, when Neil was doing the trade of the day, I was saying Starbucks, a nice little move down. We capture some of that and get out here. 71.80 for 80 cent winner there uh, as well off of this short, 72.42. I do see CD Davis, 
there. Great question. Can we have orders back and forth uh, on the stocks? And yes, we can. I can have bids and offers simultaneously. I actually have an offer right here at Starbucks to get more short if it does come through. And I do have bids down here uh, to capture some of the profits. As here goes Uber back to the downside. We take a beautiful short again. 2793. What's up, Brandon? Uh, Tupperware, guys. Just noticing uh, Tupperware making a big move to the upside. Didn't get my chart uh, up there, but uh, just reading the news here. Tupperware moving higher today. They appointed three new directors and uh, changed some management around. So have a look at TUP, guys. Okay, tup, tup, Good tup. look there. And arrows down. There goes big lots through 20 even. I just got triggered into that one. 1998 short. A couple of other shorts that we have on. I'll just go to Macy's here. We left you guys uh, with this sh short here at VWAP 683. I was just looking to add to it at 78 and 79. Um, unfortunately, uh, haven't been picked up. It's now working in the money for me already about 11 cents or so. Uh, this is the flush we were looking for. Through this little bottom here at 72, it was also uh, the opening range break to the upside. So you have a nice little level that we're playing in Macy's. We get through this one and the futures keep going down. I mean, look, we could be at 650 in a heartbeat. So nice little short here on Macy's, uh, about uh, 10 cents in the money. Uh, Carnival right now, 25 cents in the money, looking to take some profit off in front of 13. Uh, we're sitting here at 1306, a bit of a buyer there. So. Uh, I'll probably move up to 07 or 08 to see if we can't get those shares off. No, it looks like we did. Uh, so let's cancel the, those sevens. Last quarter on Carnival, looking for it to break 13 even and get a bigger flush, just like Macy's. Again, position short for the rollover with that double fail at 2800 on the ES. Yeah, good, good good luck on that double fail there. We talked about 2800 how key that was going to be, uh, and it looks like it was. Uh, unfortunately, we get out of too much of our Uber here. Uh, we, we basically instantly had 15 pennies. We short up here again. Look at this. You guys want to talk about a structured trade? This is exactly what Neil and I uh, talk about and what we look for every single day. Uh, check this one out. Uh, put a line right here. Uber, look at these shorts. And again, if you guys want to talk about, uh, uh, actually, I'll put the arrows back up again. There's been some questions about what these arrows mean exactly. These are short sells. So these purples up here, we're selling, we're borrowing the stock up here at $27.90, $28, something like that, uh, and then buying it back. So here we go. I short a couple hundred shares up here, $27.90, drops right down. We collect our, you know, our 100 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is, down here and bang. And a lot of you guys ask, Asking about the platform we're on. We're on P Pro 8 from Day Trade the World. So maybe Valeria can drop that link in there. And it's not retail. We have direct market access. So when you're looking at the level two here, maybe some of you haven't even seen a live level two, but when you're using a gateway like a BAT or even a New York or a NASDAQ and you post, so you are. Um, passively sitting there on the bid and bye bye Uber uh, as you're passively sitting there on the bid uh, you can collect rebates and bang there it goes so we say WTF to you Uber and uh, we hit once again another home run this is a 30 penny 40 penny winner uh, right now on Uber so thank you so much Uber we're going to get out of this one as right now it makes that aggressive move down Neil yeah you're talking about moves to the downside we'll go with the disco ball because I, I like hearing it every once in a while we we do take the carnival uh, out in front of 13 even. Look, we keep bouncing off of it. We can re-enter on a level break, complete plenty of liquidity there, or catch a pullback into 20s, not 30s this time. We also took some shares off there in Macy's at 670. We're still holding 683s. And I'll go back to the chart just to show you what I think can happen here. I mean, ultimately, if I zoom out, I can show you all of the room to fill in uh, down towards 650 on a Macy's. I like to reload in the 80s, similar to what we're looking at in carnival in the 20s. If we hold all this top in the market I'm only going to be shorting unless we take it out so this is a, the approach I'm gonna have for the rest of the you know the show and maybe even the rest of the day that 2800 we're basically making a 30 handle range on the ES and the shorts have been working not gonna move away from it just yet uh, but we are ready for Brennan what do you have buddy? Uh, another one that's been moving around this week guys eHealth EHTH on the Nasdaq 4.75 percent again today we took out the top from yesterday here uh, initially got all the way then back down to 102 uh, tagged the high of around 112 and a half, but uh, eHealth doing all kinds of volume again today, guys. eHealth, okay, you know what? We keep adding uh, names to my quote board. I'll show you guys, I mean, I like to organize with a quote board. I can go alphabetical, I can see what the volume is, what's been moving around by percent. Uh, so I like to jump around by using my quote board. You'll see me flip to it back and forth a few times there. Uh, but one thing that you gotta make sure you do when you have tools, whether it's charts, whether it's quote boards, you know, have a reasonable number. If you cannot, uh, you know, function, if you can't trade your strategies effectively, it can mean that you're looking at one too many symbols. I run into that problem a couple of times here, so you want to clean things up. Every time Brennan gives us a name, 
it's going to be an interesting one and you want to jump in and look at it. Like when he gave me big lots, I'm like, okay, let's have a look at this name. I didn't actually even make a trade until I got a clear signal for me, which was going to be this uh, futures breakdown and this move into VWAP and the failure uh, through 2050 when it tried to break the first time. So a couple of shorts on right now, Macy's, big lots, looking for a re-entry on Carnival, either a 13 even break or pull back into that 1320 to 1330 range. Look, I mean, the market was absolutely falling there, and uh, we got out of some of our Twitter. I wasn't sure what to do because we're short Starbucks, we're short Uber, uh, and uh, unfortunately, look, Twitter's been fantastic. If this market goes, guys, uh, smash Twitter long because uh, this has been a very aggressive stock to the long side here. It didn't fade out at all uh, during this market move down from 2,800 basically uh, at 949, which would have been 1049. So up right up here, uh, you know, it only dropped down about 18 cents. Uh, when the futures dropped about 25 handles. So I do like Twitter uh, to the long side. Right now, Uber fading down, that's 30 penny winner. Uh, Starbucks right now is a 40 penny winner. Uh, and our Twitter is a flat trade on the long side. What's up, Valeria? Hey guys, cities are now being on the lockdown. I know that a lot of you are now being hopefully self-isolated, but thankfully internet is open and you can trade with us and chat with us. So please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for our channel. We're live every day from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, be active on the chat, ask us questions, leave us comments. We want to hear from you because we are doing that for you. And if you're watching us from Facebook please like and share our video and guys if you are in need for a little bit more active chat you can uh, go to the YouTube I'll send you the link and you can join our chat in there it's absolutely the same stream uh, well uh, I'll join you later back to traders and another one to look at here, guys, XAN. Uh, we've been talking about these little mortgage rates all week long. This is another one uh, gapping up 23% or holding 23% to the upside. Uh, just coming back to an interesting level here, 360. Tested it a couple of times already this morning. Uh, XAN, huge volume as well today, guys. And another one with uh, big volume here is American Airlines on 58 million shares. I know a couple of you guys, uh, Greg on the chat, I think was asking about this name uh, in the pre-market. Made a big top there at 1340, big fall off. But look at the consolidation of the last hour, you know, almost you know, over an hour, I would almost say. Uh, 13 even is going to be a big price. VWAP here at 1270, bouncing over and over again. So if you get that rollover that we're talking about in the future, I think maybe at American Airlines, you know, it's not that it's overextended, but 13% to the upside. Future's making a high. It's giving you consolidation. If it breaks down uh, below this VWAP, it's going to be a good, interesting short. And it's going to give you the structure of a trade where you can be disciplined about it. You've got a clear level at this 13 even that you can work from. You're only going to be risking about 15 to 20 cents if you structure it properly. So I'll add American Airlines to the potential shorts if we get a breakdown in the market here at 27.70. Uh, yeah, we just took off some Uber there uh, to go. Oh, uh, what I want to talk about was uh, our one of uh, Neil's uh, good friends here uh, because he loves the show. Uh, I guess it's a movie now, but I guess there's The Mandalorian and there's a whole bunch of things like that. But here's Chewy, uh, Chewbacca. So C-H-W-Y there uh, coming through. Uh, what a big stock this has been lately. Uh, kind of an obvious one too because a recent IPO never really got going too much. And now all of a sudden people realizing that, yeah, pets... Uh, need to eat. Not that they're realizing that, but that Chewy uh, is a big stock uh, here because online pet services right now, a lot of people, just like our friends uh, from CB Wine there, a lot of people not lining up at stores and whatnot. Chewy, we take a long here as it breaks above the high of the day. It bounced off a couple times, 39.80. So yeah, we'll take a few hundred shares here and see if we can't ride this to the top side. We're now long 85s, guys. Let's go. Bit of a quick break at 13, an immediate failure uh, on CCL. I'm not going to get away from shorting this name as it's been trending to the downside. We talked about the reasons why. Look, we're either taking the top off or we're going to continue to short this one in front of VWAP. But it did just try to break down through 12, so 13 even. Uh, failed here at 95, came back in, but it's holding the bottom end of the range for now. So as long as we're below this 13, 10-ish area and maintain this VWAP, we'll probably still structure our shorts. Just don't want to dig in too deep because when you get a failed break, 
you can get some of those short sellers that panic out. And you don't, you don't want to be the last one out uh, the gate uh, if there's a failed break. So I'm going to make sure we watch that closely at 13.15. But Brendan, what do you have for us? Uh, another one that's uh, off the highs here, the market off the highs, uh, obviously back to the uh, downside. Capri Holdings, we mentioned this one yesterday, had a really, really strong move up to almost $2. Coming back into 150 here, 150 was support earlier. That lets go, uh, a lot of room to the downside for CAPR, guys. Okay, so Chewy right now, um, I'm just noticing there is some decent size here at 40. So uh, I'm still in love with the long, uh, but we did, look, we've cashed out half uh, right now. So uh, we'll wait to see here. If we break through 40, let's go. Uh, we have an order at $40.10. Uh, hopefully that'll get picked up if we rip up. And uh, I'm just going to check the daily chart on this one. Uh, some of you guys asking what, what kind of VWAPs do we use here? This is a C, uh, you know, you can see here a 50 period moving average. We are well above that one. And here's what we're talking about. This is kind of embarrassing because less than a month ago, Chewy was $22. So you're up 50% almost right now, breaking through. And there goes $40, uh, what it looks like. Yes. And where does it stop? Right at my order at 4010. Thanks, uh, Chewy. Uh, we'll see if it can break now through 4010. Guys, we're long right now. This is a 20 penny winner plus. Uh, let's see if Chewy can't get uh, excited to the top side. And bang, there it is. Thank you, Mr. Chewbacca. Let's go, baby. Uh, this stock making the moves. We got a nice little winner here. Like I said, you put on a few shares there. You get rewarded to the top side. Chewy with a 9% move today, guys. A name that was washed yesterday is we just uh, cover that CCL at 1310. When you get those failed breaks, like I just mentioned, run to the exits when it takes out that, uh, that, that next level of the upside. So when 1310 went, I'm going to be out of it looking for a re-entry. We still have the chance to roll over in the future, so you're going to get another shot short if it's a big one in store. But I'm looking at Pinterest here. It's still up on the day, barely over, just over 1%. But look at this flush. It's right on its low. Double bottom just got made here at 1690. A lot of sell action coming in on Pinterest. This one looks like it could roll over as we speak. And this one's just been dumping in the last hour or so. So watch out for this 1690 area on pins. I mean, look, it was trading in the pre-market a little bit lower than this. So it is uh, not the actual low of the day, simply the low since the, since the open. So alert to that 1690 area, Pinterest now firmly on the radar. It'll be positive to negative at 1683. So that could also be a level in your way. Uh, okay, so Chewy, I, I put a stop order in there. None of you guys uh, asking about those order types. We're not going to get out of any more Chewy uh, period anymore. We're going to wait to see. Uh, it does break back down below 40. Uh, so we put a quick little stop order uh, and get triggered there at that 40 level. Uh, so that's where we got out of some of our shares there on Chewy right now. We're going to hold the rest. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go position board on here uh, for you as it's getting close to 11.23. We're getting close to our next guest of the day, TG Watkins, uh, coming through. Uh, okay. Okay, here we go. Where's my position board, if we can put this on? Which one do you want to go with, guys? This one? Okay. If I put my... Okay, there we go. We're on that side now. All right. Good. Uh, Chewy Long right now, 39.85. As I'm seeing right now, it's breaking through 40. That's a 15-penny winner. So Starbucks on this move down in the futures, a great little 39-penny winner uh, on that one. And Twitter, four pennies out of the money. And our Uber, 27 pennies in. So uh, four for four right now. Uh, but Twitter and Chewy uh, are the biggest positions for me, guys, uh, as we roll. Another leg down, and it's not yet falling off the earth, but we're hoping Macy's can do just that. We talked about 650 as a target, and we're halfway there. I mean, actually more than halfway. We're short at 683. We took some out at 73. Now we're hanging on to see if we can't get down into that 650 range. We talked about the gap that it had to fill, still up 11% despite this rollover. So for me, you're targeting about 25 to 30 cents of a win on Macy's, which is a great return. We're playing with some house money. What I will do here, we initially had our stop at this 690 area. Now that we've run deep into the money, we can move our stop close to the VWAP and break even. You don't want to turn a winning trade into a losing trade. What you can do is maybe reload some in the 75 to 80 range and then keep maintain that stop area. So if it does retest back up, you do add on some shares and increase your opportunity to make some profits with that short, but you're not going to give it through VWAP. So we're going to adjust that order look for our target if we get exactly what we're looking for fantastic if we don't it's already going to be a winner it can't turn into a loser at this point but brendan what do you have for us big mover from the past couple of days here guys ygyi down 15 percent today so we had two days in a row to the upside kind of extending a bit of a sell-off we had in the uh, afternoon yesterday bounced off 155 here but uh, looking like we might get another break to the downside here for uh ygyi they had some COVID 19 related news uh, earlier in the week guys 
And if Brendan says it, you know I'm going to have a look at it. So YGI is going to go get thrown on the court board. Had some luck with it this week, so certainly we'll jump back into that if we see an opportunity. But at this point, I know you guys love this every single day. Uh, we have In Focus with Valeria. Hey guys, welcome to InFocus. Some updates in case you've missed. Well, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said that coronavirus outbreak could stabilize within weeks if state maintains the strict social distancing rules. He also said that even, the, even though New Yorkers' lives uh, never will be the same, uh, the social distancing rules are showing their result. According to All American Economic Survey, one out of four Americans have either lost their job or seen their wages cut due to coronavirus outbreak. International Labor Organization said that they expect coronavirus outbreak to wipe away 6.7% of working hours globally in the second quarter of 2020. This is equivalent to 159 million uh, full-time workers. World Health Organization officials are now investigating on several cases where animals have been infect infected with the coronavirus from their caretakers. They are concerned about two dogs in Hong Kong, a cat in Belgium, and a tiger from the Bronx Zoo. That's all for today. Stay healthy and stay in focus. Back to the traders. Thank you very much, Valeria. Uh, just noting here, I mean, you see Brennan talking about old futures all over the place, uh, but look at Oxy. This is what we've been trading all the way back down to that 16 even error. We talked about why we were scalping it earlier because you knew there'd be expanded volatility despite the fact that the overall market is not moving around too much off of this 2800 high in the ES. You're getting massive, massive swings in the energy space. So, you know, you have that meeting coming in. You don't know necessarily what's going to come out of it. Everyone's hopeful that they'll reach a deal. Uh, but watch the uh, awesome volatility and opportunity in Occidental. I think at this point, you might want to see it uh, or it's wait for it to broke, retest uh, 17 even uh, before trying a short. Uh, but it's uh, given back so much in the price of oil. It does seem like there's an, uh, some selling going into that meeting. So you might want to take advantage of it. I like Oxy uh, to express the shorts. If you want those longs, maybe XOM is a better place. Looking at both those names, heavily on the radar right now, Sean. Yeah, I, every, I, you know, I like uh, XOM. I think you like Oxy better. And we, I mean, there's a whole bunch of names. Marathon. You could trade any of them. Fang. Uh, anything like that uh, can will move uh, on oil numbers, uh, including names in Toronto as well. But uh, what I was going to say under my breath, I don't know if my mic was hot there or not, but I feel like I missed uh, this XOM trade. This was the trade right here. Uh, this is where we opened up at 9:30, right? 45:45 there. Uh, so what happens is when you break that opening range uh, to the top side, look what happens. You get a huge dollar thirty move there, and then guys, you break it again uh, back to the downside. That forty-five, forty-five. You know, I'm going to put a line here. Why not? Uh, these are our charts, guys. This is on the P Pro Eight system. Uh, so if you are uh, part of our team, you do get charting as well uh, with this platform. And look at this break. Uh, here's what we're talking about pre-market, and I feel like. I don't know, I feel like I fell in a hole a little bit on this one. Uh, bear with me because I really feel that this was a great opportunity, especially on those oil moves. Brendan gave them to us uh, sort of as they were happening. Breaking back above 45 should have been triggered and then breaking below 45 again, 45.50 here, sorry, uh, should have been triggered us again to the short. We bounce off of this VWAP uh, a couple times there and then back down. So that's what I mean when I say I think we missed this one uh, a little bit. It did bounce off once again, 44.50. So. Uh, a little bit of uh, opportunity has gone by the wayside there, but uh, you know, XOM, a great trade there for sure. Uh, $11, and uh, what was I talking about? 11, uh, the time is 11.30. Maybe up for grabs here as we wait for more information to come. Absolutely there, Sean. I'm going to work into, uh, we have a couple of positions, so I will give you guys the position board. Just a few shorts here, a couple of shorts that we're working with, and uh, one of them is going to be that big lot that just didn't move off that 20 break. So it's basically break even, and I don't know why it didn't come up there. We'll wait very patiently for it to show up. We are short at 1998, and it's not working, so forget about it. Uh, 1998 short on big lots. 
Uh, we also have that Macy's position short at 683. We did take off half of that for a scalp win uh, that already worked out. We do want to reload if we can. You know, still working in the money for so it hasn't given us a re-entry point just yet. As I mentioned in the chat there for you guys, I talked about the ES bouncing off 2770 another time here. You'd like to see it fail lower, ideally if you're working to some of your shorts. The, end, the NASDAQ, however, you know, is working on the lower end of its range. We get a bigger move, a retracement in the NASDAQ and the ES. That's why some of these shorts have been so good. So uh, we're going to continue to play that short retracement play until we see the top taken off on that key level. But right now, uh, Brendan, what do you have? A name we haven't mentioned uh, in a few days here, guys. Waiter Holdings popping back to the upside here. This is one of those home food delivery services. Uh, big volume spike coming in here. We just uh, broke back above a dollar. Uh, they just came out and announced they are expanding their service area, so adding new uh, territories and cities throughout the U.S. So WTRH, 2% down to the upside, guys. I mean, how did we not mention Waiter Holdings yet? Wow, I don't know what yeah. we're missing on. Okay, uh, but what we are mentioning here is Chewy, so we go bang on that one. Uh, if you guys know what game this is from, put in the chat. If it's your first time, uh, you would never heard this before, but I ask this almost every day. My favorite game uh, on the board. Here we go, Chewy, guys. We are long $39.85. It's up to $40.32, so Banger right there. Not too many home runs today, but this is a great one. Uh, you can see our in there. I gave this one to you guys at 40. I'm not sure if you're playing options or equities or what, but here we go right up to 40, 30. For our friend Chewy, a uh, nice little spread though. 13, 14, 15 pennies. Uh, those of you, yeah, there it is guys. Street Fighter, thank you so much. Uh, you guys know that. Who's your favorite character? Mine, Ken or Ryu. Uh, and if you're playing Street Fighter Ultimate, maybe Saget as well. Uh, Neil, I don't know if you have uh, a favorite uh, character or not on that game? I mean, to be perfectly honest, I was a Ryu guy. I know, uh, you know, between the two, that was the one I would pick. I wasn't a huge uh, Street Fighter uh, player. I actually ended up uh, more on the Mortal Kombat side, to be perfectly honest with you, just because of a friend of ours uh, uh, from high school used to, used to have that game. So I was more of a Mortal Kombat guy and a Sub-Zero player, but uh, Street Fighter, a good one as well. Uh, I did mention in the chat there, once again, back into Carnival Cruise in that 1320 to 1330 range. So I jump in front of that at 18s here as it tries to break VWAP again. You know, just working this short over and over uh, again has been, you know, since that opening trade long, it's just been the play. It's showing some weakness. It's giving you some solid entries. We can't break higher in the future. So until it doesn't work, we'll just rinse and repeat over and over and over again. Macy's is starting to work again to the downside, about 19 pennies in the money, targeting 25 to 30 cents of a return on that one. Again, we're not going to be able to reload if it keeps working down for us uh, in the money. So short, 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 big lots, Carnival and Macy's. Sorry, I had to hit that Street Fighter again. There's a lot of talk on there. We need a Sharuk in there uh, for that. You know, we need some more uh, Street Fighter little animations there, so that should be good uh, on that. Okay, uh, yeah, we're getting close now uh, to our guest. We've talked about that before. TJ Watkins, director uh, over there at Simpler Trading. So uh, hit those guys up, Simpler Trading. Uh, maybe we can, uh, well, I'll, I'll tweet it out. Follow me, Neil, and Brendan on Twitter uh, if you want to see our guests and, and whatnot, some of the trades we've made. I actually haven't posted anything today. Uh, it's been a super busy day uh, for us, but we will be posting uh, more and more and more, maybe even including uh, this Chewy trade as I look around uh, for more stocks to trade uh, for you guys. I did see some notes on PayPal. I'm really glad I didn't trade Square uh, off the top there. What? Okay. See, I, didn't, I didn't realize this was this kind of a pullback here, Brendan. $65 when Brendan gave it to us uh, as a mover. Look at this. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any move, news coming on there, but that's like about from 65 down to 59. So you're looking at about an 8% retracement there on Square. So this may be a good little spot to go long as we begin to jumble up here, guys. I will put a little ellipse there. Hopefully you can see that uh, on the screen. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, there it goes on the screen. Uh, you can see we're just bouncing off 60.50 and heading down to 59. So a dollar 50 range when it breaks out of there. More specifically, if you like square to the downside, 59 dollars looks like a great break, and we're only 50 cents away from that right now, guys. Yeah, I'm going to jump back to Costco for a second. This is the name that we were looking at a bit earlier, and uh, very very tight consolidation. Now showing some real weakness here as well. If it tests this 298 level at some point, you've made it a double bottom here. You're consolidating below VWAP. The futures are maintaining. Their 
they're high. As much as you know, I can like the name and you can think it's a strong company, you got to play price action. And if it's going to be to the south side, you're going to have to watch a rollover on this one at 298, especially in the afternoon, especially if we take out this 2770 on the ES. If the market rolls over, you're going to add Costco to the short list. Despite thinking that I liked it long on a take of 2800, this might turn into a short play at 298. If we do get this rollover in the futures, I got three shorts on. Might have to add this one to the list if we get a breakdown. Yeah, I'm just tweeting out uh, this Uber chart here. And uh, we can talk about this again and again. And remember, the purple uh, ticks here, and I'll throw that low up for you guys if it's just checking in with us uh, for the first time. These are short sell arrows here uh, on the purple. So I just want to give you guys this look here on Uber. We've drawn this long before, $28. Uh, and now Uber just continues to fall. We still have this short, $27.92. We're still on. These are just all random outs here uh, that we take it in. It's just kind of just now in a range, 73 to 51 top to bottom there uh, our Starbucks trade is still on I mean Starbucks is a sleepy one uh, 72 these are again short sells uh, and then getting out right down here but uh, I don't know Starbucks look at all these outs Wow uh, Starbucks right now bouncing off of this high 7250 not sure what's gonna happen here in the futures but we're getting near that time where we have a holiday tomorrow I want to wish everybody a good Friday as well uh, that's gonna be tomorrow we're back obviously on Monday uh, but right now a market that has closed and needs updating of course a bunch of them across the pond there in Europe let's throw it to Valeria at the screen Hey guys, European market is closed now and I want to update you on the numbers. Well, Britain is up 2.41%, France is up 0.76%, Russia is up 0.96% and Italy is up 1.24%. Well, Europe is closed in the positive territory today. That's all for today and back to the guys. Thank you very much. I just mentioned in the chat there on that CCL, you know, as, as the market gets really range bound uh, closer to lunchtime, I'm going to start thinking of taking off some of these trades for scalps and you get re entries on those breaks. Uh, so for me, we're going to take this if we can get 13.05 or so, we'll just grab that little 15 cent uh, winner if we can. It's going to be the same uh, thing over with Macy's. I was targeting 25 to 30 cents, but as I watch, you know, this name slide down and really start to base out here in front of 660. There was a bigger buyer at that even. I might actually take this one off if we can get it here for just the 20 cent win or even just take it out here as it tries to take out uh, 63. So as I just saw 63 go, I just punched out of this one. We'll take the 20 cent win. It's not going to be the 25 or the 30, but the market's just not going anywhere. When this happens, you want to make sure you're taking profits. And if you're going to get a better re-entry price when we're range bound, take advantage of the range. So there's going to be, if it's, a, if it's a continuing trend in Macy's, there will be re-entry points. There's nothing wrong with that. Same thing with Carnival. If it's going to be a good trend, there will be re-entry points. So once the market gets going, we'll work back into those. Still have a little bit of Carnival at 18 short and still have that big loss, which is not going anywhere lately, Sean. Yeah, and I, I feel like the guest of the day can't uh, come at a better time here because uh, right now the market is not doing a whole hell of a lot and we do talk about it guys be disciplined I mean, we have different charts set up here uh different executions happening uh blah 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 coffee uh check out the merch uh where's the where's the camera here trader tv live soon for sale hopefully uh merchandise coming uh but yeah you know what you just got to chill out uh sometimes and, and and watch the market see what's happening i have chewy up on the board here that's a 19 cent winner starbucks still bouncing around here and uber uh is 30 cents in the money i don't have anything else uh hands free uh right now as we look for more news and more trades uh, to come here my American uh, not mine but I, I've traded it today it was a really successful trade uh, breaking this long at 1270 and getting up to 1340 look what I'm talking about here this is exactly the situation that uh, we really don't like uh, what am I gonna do go short here 1270 just to have it bump up to 90 again we're stuck in this little 20 cent range uh, on some of these stocks and I know there's a lot of names that Neil's looking at where the same thing is happening but uh, Brendan give us one to trade volume today as well guys hmm. yeah, uh, just one of you guys good. in the chat here mentioning WTRH this is a fantastic time as Sean mentioned the, the market's slowing down a little bit fantastic time to jump through some of your charts and your watch list 
to find, you know, opening range breaks, uh, pre-market level breaks. I mean, this one uh, was doing literally nothing until right here at 11.29, and we get a big spike up. It takes out a couple of price ranges, including the dollar even mark, and is now on the run with 3.8 million shares. So this is the kind of thing you want to look out for. I just reloaded in, uh, in Carnival, like I mentioned, in that 13.20 range. So again, you know, 13.22, first entry at 18, average price is going to be 13.20. Been shorting in that 20 to 30 range, and then just scalping it in and out. That's all we're going to be doing here guys while you hunt uh, for things to play when the market breaks out of this we're not going to sit in a 20 or 30 handle range on the es the entire day there is a zero percent chance it's going to happen you can take that to the bank you just want to make sure you have ideas in either direction when it breaks that's what we're trying to give to you guys uh sean what do you got over there on apple yeah exactly uh good little look there we just punched into apple uh at 267.30 i apologize for this wick here i gotta get that out. it's a dark print down to 244 shout out to airplane jane uh for that one uh okay uh here's apple we just take it it's right at that vwap uh you guys did talk about that we're right at vwap right now so we go long 33 it goes all the way to 53 there here it goes a nice little 20 cent winner right there uh for apple so here tell us if you like uh this logo as well apple moving there's a little bit of an arca book here at 30 uh, I'm pretty light right now. It's not a big position for me uh, in the market. So I would much rather load up if we get back uh, to 266 even. Uh, we're just playing with, uh, like Neil says, house money. We destroyed Apple already here, guys, uh, on this long, if I can zoom away. Uh, this was the long that we had early. You guys were asking me about Apple early on in the day. Uh, this is right at 930. So uh, it executes down here, 267. We take that long. Bang, that's 50 cents. That's 40 cents. And there's two dollar winner there on Apple to celebrate the day and right now we reinvestigate the long uh, and uh, we're gonna wait to see what happens here 267.33 uh, is my long spot on Apple we got long Chewy we got short Starbucks and we have short Uber which is 20 pennies in the money uh, but TG Watkins from Simpler Trading uh, is on board right now with Brendan so let's throw it over to the desk with Brendan and our guest of the day And there we go. All right, guys. Yeah, really happy to have T.G. Watkins, Director of Stocks uh, over at Simpler Trading, back with us again today to talk about uh, how his week has gone, talk about some of the uh, news-related events that we've uh, seen over the past uh, couple of trading sessions anyways, uh, some corona-related or uh, coronavirus-related stocks uh, moving around again today. How are you, T.G.? Good to have you back on the show. He cannot hear me, guys. Uh, I don't know if uh, he can see us. Okay, so we're having a little audio issue, guys. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can't get that resolved uh, and maybe go back to you guys for now. Okay, well, that happens uh, on a uh, Easter Thursday. I Sean, guess. I, I got to punch through. We talked about American. Brandon in the face. Sorry, Brandon, my apologies, but we just got a breakdown through VWAP on American Airlines. I talked about wanting to see uh, this one break this 1270 at VWAP. We get a couple entry points and I immediately scalp them out as is my custom, taking both ends of this trade. You get that little break for a quick 10 pennies, but you're also looking for the longer term hold on this little uh, trend to the downside now, a potential trend. So looking to get out uh, in front of 1240 or so for the second half of these shares, but I do believe TG is in the building. Figured out TG Watkins, uh, Brendan Wickens, and our guest of the day. Take two with uh, TG Watkins uh, back with us again uh, today uh, from Simpler Trading to talk a little bit about some uh, news related events, uh, as I was mentioning this week. Uh, good to have you back on the show, TG. I, I mean, a, a busy week to say the least. Uh, uh, once again, how have things gone from your end of uh, the story as far as this week has gone? Are you still looking at uh, mostly market events as far as, uh, you know, finding names that are moving with the market? Uh, obviously, the uh, positivity continuing here for the overall uh, S&P. Yeah, certainly. The positivity has continued since basically Monday. We started to get uh, less bad news about the coronavirus that came out over the weekend. This was something that I was guiding my subscribers into. Um, we got into a couple long positions on Friday. And then when Monday hit, I said, hey, uh, we're looking pretty good. So let's take a few more by the end of Monday. And so far, everything has been carrying through that pop that we had uh, from Monday morning. It was very interesting to watch that. I mean, you could see that I think a lot of people got caught flat-footed and probably short because Monday was a very, very big short covering rally. And so far we're just carrying, you know, riding that momentum because once that happened, I don't think a whole lot of people wanted to really be short this week.
Yeah, I wanted to get your opinion on this. Uh, I, I mean, you had less bad news as kind of a headline there. Uh, we are still seeing the numbers going up when it comes to New York State specifically, and some of the numbers out of Europe over the past couple of days have also been back to the upside. So I think we have to, I, I mean, the market is so eager for some sort of uh, you know positivity and good news uh, that we're just kind of grasping at anything. I think we have to be cautious as to where the market is at this point. Are there any kind of significant levels above us here that you think we might run into a little bit of trouble? Yeah, actually, today we're right at one. Have you noticed how the market today jumped up and just stopped for the morning? We're right at the 50% retracement, 50% fib retracement, and it is just hitting it right now. I'm trying to see if it's going to go past. I'm not so sure if it's going to do it today because going into a three day weekend, you kind of got to think about who wants to do what. And we've already had a pretty good move all week long. And now we're starting to become a little bit over overbought. Like I'm starting to see that price is getting a little bit too far from the hourly 50 on the S&P. Plus we're up against that FIB. So I would prefer some sort of pullback to really kind of get us in. And we don't know if we're going to get that with this kind of market. It's hard to say. Beyond that, some of the things I am looking at is we do still have the daily 50 overhead. And then overall, you know, we uh, I think when we start getting into about 290, 294 for the uh, SPY, that's about the right shoulder area for a head and shoulders pattern. So I'm being very careful about watching for those levels. Yeah, it's interesting to note, uh, you know, for anyone watching who's uh, kind of confused about uh, what TJ was mentioning there, uh, fib retracement, obviously the 50%, and then I believe the 618 would be the next one uh, to the upside that uh, a lot of people look at from a technical level as significant. So you're measuring that TG right from, I guess, all time highs uh, to the lows that we, uh, we put in back in March. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Right on. Right, so we're about 50% back. We mentioned this morning, uh, all three U.S. major indexes, 10% just this week, back to the upside, uh, which in itself is a decent move. Now more than 20% uh, off the all-time lows. Uh, when it comes to the individual stocks, as far as the uh, COVID-19 related names, uh, which are the ones that you uh, were kind of paying attention to this week? Uh, Overstock was a big one. That one has done very, very well for us. Uh, we got in on Friday, which looked pretty darn good. That was one of the ones that uh, was speaking to me. I was looking at Overstock. It gave me some heads up as to what the overall market might do. Because if you look at the at, at ticker, when um, Thursday, Friday, I was actually trying to short it to see if price was going to get stuck underneath the hourly 50 and start getting pushed down by that. By the end of Friday, I could see that price was not getting pushed down. And in fact, by the close of Friday, you could see that price had actually gotten some support at the 15 minute 50 and actually started to really move up quite with, with a lot of force energy. And I looked at that and said, okay, we first all need to be out of our shorts. So we did that early in the morning. And then I said, second, with this kind of force and what I'm seeing with the market as well, I think we need to go long. We actually just reversed our order, went long, and then that thing popped the next couple of days. And you can see it went up to like, what, 40, 50% today total from Friday's move. So we're very happy with something like that. It's kind of shown that uh, a lot of the other tickers are doing that. Tesla's kind of doing that today. I'm looking at a few others. I'm wondering, uh, Bitcoin, GBTC, it's a little bit lagging behind. Um, I'm looking at that one next, wondering if my, it might be a laggard, but still might have that in the cards for the future. Yeah, it's a, an interesting look for uh, Bitcoin. I mean, you mentioned uh, GBTC there. Uh, do you guys trade a lot of uh, pink sheet uh, names? That one obviously trading on the, uh, on the OTC market. I do. I'm fine doing that because I trade just stocks, you know, director of stocks at Simpler Trading. So I don't have to worry about options and how many uh, options, uh, you know, how uh, big the option market is for that kind of stuff. So I do like to look at the kind of lower uh, names, not always pink sheet. I got to be careful with that because I do have a large following that we have to be careful. If we go into something like this, we could either swamp it if it doesn't have enough volume. And I don't want to be putting something in. We're not day traders. That's not my goal. And so I need to make sure I'm into something that I can pretty much count on the setup and the move happening. And Overstock was great. Bitcoin, I'm usually OK doing with that. But I do need to be pay attention to what kind of names I am trading down there. Yeah, it's interesting to see uh, Bitcoin kind of holding that uh, 7200 area for the past couple of sessions. Uh, anyways, uh, let's get on to uh, energy stocks here. Obviously, uh, the oil markets in general still uh, very much in play, moving again today to the upside. And then we get the move back down on the news that it might take a little bit longer for these uh, OPEC uh, production cuts to come into play. Uh, what uh, what have you been looking at as far as energy names go and how have you been playing this uh, this uh, area this week? Yeah, first off, uh, does any of that surprise you about the, the ter turmoil and the difficulty to try and negotiate or work off the oversupply or cut you know, production? 
I mean, we, we get all sorts of news out here. This is why I usually don't play the oil names and uh, dabble in the oil area, just because it's so politically oriented. We got so many big players. We got Saudi Arabia, OPEC, Russia, even America in here now. And it's so news driven that a lot of times it's like kind of the reason why I don't like to play biotech either is because based on a news event or if somebody you know passes or fails or something, you can get these wild swings. And so it's like, I'm kind of at the mercy of news and events that I don't know about uh, that are happening, you know, maybe while I'm sleeping, as opposed to kind of pure charts and having them actually flow the way they need to flow. That being said, we have been looking at some names. We've been looking at uh, CBX and Halliburton and uh, Devon Energy. Some of those names have been doing pretty well. I try to use the USO as just basically a guide to tell me what the rest of them is gonna do. And if you look, what I've been teaching is if you look at USO, USO has basically done what the S&P has done when it came off of its low. It found that very bottom low, it bounced up to the 21 EMA, has pulled back and now found support and has moved up again. S&P did the same thing, so it's a mirror image. Yeah, what's going to, uh, what do you think is going to happen here as, as far as the energy markets go if we do get the production cuts? Obviously, uh, a lot of these names have not been participating with this latest little bounce in the price for crude itself. Uh, which ones do we go to as far as strength is concerned first, do you think? Yeah, it's going to be hard to say. I mean, I, I would like to say go with the bigger names because they're going to be around. They're, they probably have more cash on hand. They're less likely to go bankrupt, although we got Whiting that filed bankruptcy. Uh, it's going to be tough to really figure out which names to really stick with. Again, I, I'm not that big in the oil space just because it's so news driven and they're having troubles. I mean, which which company out of the blue is going to file bankruptcy and now your money is with them and you don't know it until they file for it? I mean, this is the challenge that playing in a space that is getting ramrodded by you know OPEC and other countries is really going to be posing an issue to you. Usually we, when we play other stocks, we don't have to worry about an entire sector getting these geopolitical events and having problems with it. Yeah, I like the fact that you included in your notes that uh, you sent over that uh, we still have to be cautious here. I, I mean, we're still overall in the downtrend as far as the overall market is concerned, uh, you know, a negative state. Although, as we were saying, you know, well off the lows uh, as far as what we put in back in March. Uh, I, I mean, is there anything as far as underlying uh, conditions or maybe underlying uh, strength that you're looking at uh, as far as maybe another move to the upside? Or is it uh, more the, the situation where you're looking for something to put a short on now? Uh, I wouldn't be looking at shorts yet because I don't think anybody's too keen to really keep going down. There have been negotiations. That's what we're trying to figure out. There have been, uh, you know, talking about production cuts. There might even be just kind of, uh, they say, natural production cuts as people just either go bankrupt or they can't produce anymore or they run out of storage. These are some really big issues that we need to be talking about. I mean, even the Trump administration opened up the strategic reserve uh, area so that uh, we, our oil producers, could go put their barrels of oil in there because they're simply running out of room to produce it. This is a very, very interesting and weird situation because they can't stop producing because they have debts they need to pay and they have stuff they need to pay off. But if they keep producing, it's going to drive the cost of oil down because there's so much supply. And then the the cost of oil keeps dropping down. So it's kind of this big circular thing that is really screwing everybody up. And this is why everybody's talking about cutting supply or cutting uh, production. And it's that uh, that talk that is really getting things uh, trying to go to the upside. So for now, I wouldn't be looking at the short side just because, you know, it's kind of in everybody's best interest in the industry to keep going up and there is negotiations going on. We'll go back to uh, the overall market here and talk a little bit more about the uh, outbreak, the uh, virus outbreak that everyone is uh, still unfortunately dealing with. Uh, one of the things you mentioned here was uh, the fact that Wuhan, the uh, the original uh, uh, place where this virus uh, came from, lifted their travel bans as of, I believe it was earlier in the week where people could you know, get on planes again, get on trains again. How much attention are you paying to uh, you know, any kind of sign of a reoccurrence in this uh, virus outbreak, or are we taking this just as positive news? Uh, I'm definitely going to be looking for a reoccurrence. I wouldn't be surprised if this happens. I mean, I mean, think about it. We all shut down because this is a virus and we're trying to stamp it out. It's not completely gone. And we are hoping that maybe summer heat daylight will kind of help uh, eradicate it or keep it, uh, you know, bedded down a bit. We also don't know how many people have it and are naturally immune to it. This is stuff we don't know. We're, have to, we're gonna have to keep building up the test, the antibody test to figure out who has it and didn't have a problem with it to figure out our overall herd immunity throughout the country. But I just wouldn't be surprised if we kind of see this thing either kind of nipping at us the, for several months or if there is kind of a second wave of some sort. So I'm fully prepared for something like that. 
I also wouldn't be surprised because I've been trading for a long time that the news and the market would kind of line up uh, because I am expecting the market to go back down at some point to either test the lows that we had in February or undercut those lows. And I just wouldn't be surprised if it kind of coincides with some of the news cycle. So yeah, I read I'm kind of prepared uh, for anything. Yeah, exactly. I, I read a story yesterday saying that uh, when they lifted that travel ban in Wuhan, 65,000 people the same day exited the city. So uh, yeah. that's a big number. Not sure uh, where all of those people ended up going, but uh, something to yeah. definitely watch. Our prime minister here in Canada came out this morning and said uh, this country, you know, as far as the economy is concerned, won't get back to normal quote unquote normal until a vaccine is, uh, you know, fully developed and out in the uh, in the marketplace, which could be 12 to 18 months down the road. So, uh, I mean, lots to uh, lots to still look out for as far as developments when it comes to uh, COVID-19 going forward. Uh, T.G. Watkins from uh, Simpler Trading, uh, a pleasure as always. Is there uh, uh, maybe one or two names you're looking at going into this long weekend? Honestly, I'm going to be in cash. I'm, I'm really going to be in cash three day weekend. We've had a great week. I want to capture my money, and I think things are a little high right now. We're, again, we're talking about this 50% bid that prices run into. I'm in cash. Great stuff. Uh, T.G. Watkins, uh, give everyone your social media account so we can get a hold of you. Uh, well, we're going to be switching that up at simplertrading.com, and then we're going to be working on actually launching me at my public uh, profiles on Monday. So look for that. Fantastic. We'll have you back on, uh, hopefully, in the near future. Always a pleasure, sir. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you. Great stuff. Uh, T.G. Watkins from Simpler Trading, guys, director of stocks over at uh, Simpler Trading. Great website. Go check out uh, all the stuff over there. Let's go back to the guys. I mean, great to have a, a longer term yeah. uh, frame there because, uh, as those of you know, Neil and I... Uh, Tend to be in and out of quite a what? few positions, and no. uh, here I, I'm going to I'm going to give uh, away another fake prize. Uh, do, if anybody can guess how many fills I've had today, it's not it's not total positions, can but guess? you see all the fills there today. You want to guess? Well, no, I don't want you to guess, Neil, because we sat beside each other and did this show too long. <laughs> uh, you would be too accurate, probably. But if anybody has any guesses, put them on there, guys. Uh, it's been it's been a fantastic day, and thank you to TG Watkins there from Simple Trading. Yeah. Yeah, I know we just have a few more minutes to go before we're out of here, Sean. I'm just going to update. I just have a couple of shorts on. You see me cycling in and out of a Carnival Cruise. And again, you know, we're working that 20 to 30 range, getting out in front of 13 even, and then working back in. I added American Airlines to this as well, shorting in the 60s and then up here in the mid 70s. Uh, we've been taking it off for, again, 10, 15 cent scalps. Position short. And, you know, the reason why is that if we can roll over failing through 2800, and I'll say it over and over again, there's a lot of upside in this trade. So I'm sitting net short while taking advantage of the fact that we're not moving here in the market. I can get in, I can get out 10, 15 pennies at a time and just cycling in and making some profits while maintaining the opportunity for the bigger move to the downside. So it's American Airlines, it's Carnival Cruise. I dumped big lots. It couldn't go. We lose 20 cents on that trade. Just no movement for a name that was uh, so much in play this morning. Very, very disappointing for me. Yeah, I just put it up there. Uh, thanks for all those guesses, guys. And uh, those were actually uh, incredibly accurate. But yeah. uh, the answer is 201. And I still have uh, some positions on, including right now, a nice little 37 cent winner uh, on Chewy. And we versed the short on Apple. Valeria, what do you have for us? Dear viewers, thank you very much for joining us today. For all of your activity, likes, comments, uh, stay tuned. Subscribe for our channel and you'll receive notifications when we are live back. Though tomorrow is a good Friday and market is closed, so we'll see you on Monday. Meanwhile, I sent you the links for Niels, Brandon's and Sean's Twitter accounts, so go check it out. You know, our show is very close to the end, but it's the whole trading day ahead. So follow guys, they post their trades, charts and a lot of very important trading stuff. And as usual, I'm saying what national day is today. And you know, guys, usually it's food or drinks, but today is very extraordinary day. Today is the National Unicorn Day. Have you ever seen unicorns, guys? Uh, yes. Uh, we both uh, we both don't, have. <laughs> yeah, don't, tell my daughter. Daughter. don't tell my daughter. I don't yeah, believe this, about this, this day. is not a day. I this may is, have to go out and buy day. a unicorn. No. Thanks uh, a lot, Valeria. Or, or, or something if she finds out about this. But uh, yeah, you just put. If you've never seen a unicorn before, guys, you just go to the dollar store uh, and put a cone on a horse and take a picture like that, and uh, that's what we'll Sean, be doing. That would be cheaper than buying all those unicorn toys and unicorn books and all other stuff that comes with having a young uh, a young daughter, which is fantastic. I love it. Uh, one of my daughter's favorite books is like Uni the Unicorn, so she's a, 
uh, a big fan of unicorns as well. So, look, it, it's been a fantastic uh, uh, morning, and I think the day is going to be even better. A few things before we sort of wrap this one up. Look, watch out for these key levels, 2800 on the ES, 2770 as well. I was just chatting with Arun, our futures trader. He actually said, Watch the 2800 to 2840 band. If we do get a break, make sure it sustains. If it fails at 2840, there could be a retracement short in there for you there. Also, make sure you're watching energy because, you know, a deal happens, a deal doesn't happen. Uh, that's certainly going to be interesting to watch uh, throughout the weekend, uh, well, throughout the rest of the session, and then again this long weekend. Uh, I've only got a couple of shorts on, so nothing really to, uh, to talk about in terms of uh, positions. Uh, CCL and American Airlines right around BWAP on both these names. That's what I'm going to be working with uh, into this 2800 level. Sean, what do you got? What do you have over there? Uh, we got we got Apple short side. We got Chewy still long side, and uh, Chewy's been a good one uh, for us today. That's probably uh, the best looking trade uh, that I've made. And then we've also got Starbucks, and uh, I'll just look at, show you guys the Starbucks trade again. Uh, look where we are short. Uh, we shorted this little great pop here at 72.80 uh, before getting some out in the 50s there. So short, short, short. Now out. We'll wait to see what Starbucks wants to do off this top of 73. And uh, here's the Chewy trade that I'm loving. Uh, this was a great break here. Of $40. This is the all-time high uh, for Chewy. So yes, we still go back into the money, baby. Uh, Chewy for the long and the win on this one, but it's been a fantastic day. Uh, needless to say, we are not. I see some people if we're back tomorrow. No, uh, we're back Monday, Easter Monday. Uh, they're coming tomorrow. Good Friday, of course. All of the markets are closed. Uh, may all of you guys uh, enjoy that. Unfortunately, it's not going to be with uh, as many family members as I know Neil or I and a lot of you would like, but uh, Stay safe and stay inside and enjoy your Easter. Um, I don't know, drink whatever you're going to do there. Celebrate it because it's an important time to enjoy your life, guys. Absolutely. And with that, couldn't have said it any better myself. I'm going to run down the line for you guys as we're past noon here uh, for the entire team here at TraderTV.Live. you got Valeria doing a fantastic job on the chat. And, of course, Sean Katina, as always, our good friend. Give a wave, you guys. You are on camera right there. Uh, and of course, our good friend Brennan Wiggins doing a fantastic job. And I thank all of our guests for coming through. Mr. Professional himself, Brennan there. And for myself, Neil Roberts, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, this has been TraderTV.Live. We'll see you next week. I could have gone the rest of my life.